Roll an <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Ready. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining the, us this fair eve with a new player who will introduce himself last to save him some of the stresses. So, as you all know, I'm Jake. This is Wisdom Check. We do videos on Pathfinder and how to treat each other not like shit. Oh, crap. I did it already. Wait, it's been on um, over yes, a minute, yes, right? Yes, okay. <laughs> <sighs> Demonetization's annoying. So, anyway, um, we are continuing the Outlaws of Balkan Star AP modified. You'll see a lot more modification this session unless we devolve into just bickering. Which might happen. You never know. New player, New player. what happens? Um, also, I beg your patience this evening because the new player also isn't familiar with Foundry. So we're going to be explaining things and walking uh, through a lot of different steps. So I appreciate that you're still here and being willing to watch. Um... Uh, starting with the characters, I have an NPC in the in the game named Edmund. He's a card player and apparent demon summoner. Um, so let's start with Red Devil, if you would, please. Oh, uh, yes, uh, I'm Red Devil, and I play Nimue, the grafted witch. She has a uh, cat familiar that seems to be, or that seems to think he's a god, or that's, yeah. He's at least very opinionated and expressive. Yeah. This is a cat. It's obviously not a god, but it's, uh, I wouldn't say powerful yet. Oh, no. He's sure he's powerful. <laughs> uh, John, if you would, please. I'm John. I am playing the triumphant return of Raven Evermore, the orc, thaumaturge, vampire, dragon person. On a motorcycle. On a motorcycle. Robert? Hello, I'm Robert. I'm playing uh, Sir Lynn, the uh, halfling noble swashbuckler. Who is noble to an annoying fault. <laughs> Isn't that kind of a requirement of being noble? Is to <laughs> annoy the shit out of every non-noble around you? Yeah, like every time they show a King Arthur on TV and he's just like every other guy, I'm like, that is not King <laughs> Arthur. There's no way. Morg, sir? I am Morgulline. I am playing Kazek, a rogue thief turned ghoul, who you can totally trust to turn your back to. <laughs> right! <laughs> He's a friendly ghoul, friendly thief, wrote. So, as everybody should see on the screen, we are in a dark and misty night. It's not necessarily mist. It's probably smog because this is called the city of smog for a reason. Um, there's also a clinging moisture to it because it's right near a waterfall, and that waterfall is contaminated with mutating magic. So there's this like sort of sparkle tingle on your skin when you're inhaling the smog and mist. <laughs> Good night. It's so it's so funny how much of this really resembles Phoenix. Like this whole damn region <laughs> made to resemble. There's fog everywhere. It smells terrible. It's dry as hell. Your eyes sting going outside. This is Phoenix. In fact, I know that this is like not at all what I really innately want to do, but I'm familiar, so I'm probably gonna want to keep this region and keep role playing in it because I can easily describe shit. Yeah, you got the environmental cues down. All right, so where we last left off is we had previously been inside a, a workshop of Kosawana, the dude we're trying to track down because he might have reinvented Pyro Knight and he flew away on a silver sphinx, metal sphinx. Inside his workshop was a time rift that we tossed something through and it got bigger and then sent a demon through and it closed. And then we went outside and there's another time rift. And that's when a couple people on a motorcycle drive through and one of them's Raven. The big billowy cloak that especially billows when he stops. <laughs> Just because it can. Alright, so... Plot point, to make sure everybody's aware, at the very end of last session, right before they walked outside, uh, Chad noticed a piece of metal that had in big red letter letters in English, radioactive, that nobody else could read, because it's in English and nobody else can read that. So, it must have come through a time portal from somewhere, somehow, and there's something that's explosive out there in a major way. Yeah, totally not a yeah. hydrogen bomb. Well, yeah, he deciphered that it is yeah. from the casing of a hydrogen bomb. Yeah. So, thank you for bringing that up, because people should know that, because that's fucking dangerous as hell. 
Oh, no kids, I forgot to say! If you're not mature, or if you're a kid that thinks you're mature, go away. Because you're not mature yet. <laughs> right. <laughs> Oh, the views are up to four. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> oh, shit. All right, so I'm not sure who was the first person out, but Chad is the closest to Raven. <laughs> um, so Raven comes out of just a rip in space that people can see through to... I guess it would be like scrubland, like it looks like burnt desert. So there's like black plants around and dirt and rocks. And uh, they still see that after he comes through, the portal stays open. Chad is the first to see them and he probably dodges out of the way because fucking vehicle running right for him. And so his first message is, ah! <laughs> And then I guess Raven would probably stop and realize that you're in a town that you know you didn't spend the time driving to. So you went through a temporal and physical displacement zone. Uh, fuck, I don't remember what the perception rules were. Oh, but Foundry kept track, didn't it? Let's look at the perception checks. <sighs> okay, so that's a good reason to have Foundry. It keeps track of perception checks from last time. <laughs> All right, six days ago. That's medicine, medicine, crafting your stupid plus 23. <laughs> okay, Edmund and Nimue didn't notice. Um, hey, here's the first test for Morguline. I'm not going to call you that because it's, it's hard to pronounce. It's Morg. Um, will you please look at your character sheet and... Look at how much you add for stealth, and add 10 to that. That is your stealth DC. I want to know what your stealth DC is. And 10 to the stealth is uh, 27. Mm, Nimue's familiar notice, and no one yeah. will. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, he would maybe notice if there were someone... Who like an assassin lurking nearby, I think. <laughs> oh, actually, Chad made it. Oh. No, that's a different role. Sorry. Because oh. Chad rolled a 34 on the way out, and that's when I had you notice the metal. Um, but what the fuck? We can say that Chad... Oh, God, he's still an NPC, though. Ah! It's so weird to have an NPC and then NPC notice things. All right, so I guess, like, right before Raven came out, Chad was pointing at a rooftop going, Hey, look, ah! And then ran. Uh, that was who was on the rooftop. I gotcha. I remember now. Cool. That, there's nobody on the roof. I went and looked. <laughs> 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 yes, I remember that. <laughs> they looked very thoroughly. And, uh... I think that I don't know how Nimue's clothes work, but Nya climbs inside them. Okay, yeah, she has a little, uh, like a an over shirt kind of thing. Uh, you you see the picture, right? Like the... Yes. Yeah, so okay, it... can he like lay in that? Yeah. Okay. Actually, if magic's working, uh, he can become a, an actual shadow and just become Nimue's shadow. Because she, I don't, I don't know if it's been brought up, Nimue doesn't have a shadow because her shadow is in the other So you can just turn back. This would be the most obvious time because there's light being cast from different doorways. Yeah. And so because he turns into a shadow and everyone sees he moves into her shadow, they would see that she normally doesn't have a shadow, which is often a, just a, a defining feature of a shadow monster or a vampire. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so he's hiding in your shadow. Um, 
you sense fear from him, like actual nervousness. Not like he's terrified for his life, but something's not right. And you know that for him, that wouldn't be the time portal. What is it? Yeah, something's up. I don't like monsters. They tend to be hungry. Rooftop. I look at the rooftop. And he's hiding really well. There's nothing there. <laughs> hmm. Damn your eyes, woman. <laughs> I'll trust you, but I don't see anything. So it's... I'll, I'll just say uh, to, to Sarah Lynn, who is uh, apparently close to me right now. Uh, I think there's a monster nearby, says Nia. Watch out. And the roof is over there. I point, there's nothing. Again with the yeah. roofs? I, I see nothing. I don't either. see anything either, but I trust Nia. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then Raven comes out of a portal. And I want to say to everyone, that is not feedback. That is something uncontrollable. The buzzing, the ringing is Red Devil's backyard. I'm sorry, let, I'll just mute whenever I'm not talking. I just want people to be aware that we're trying. It's just environmental. It's going to keep happening. It's crickets. Yeah, Big, yeah. monstrous, happy crickets. Gotta get a there better could be mic. crickets in this city, chirping around. A little background noise, it's fine. These are jungle crickets. <laughs> <laughs> but they are! Actually, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> they look like the size of a small dog jumping through the streets. Yeah, I need to find a picture of jungle crickets. <laughs> That's <now>. creepy. <laughs> they're not that big, but yeah, they're... They get, they get big. Crickets of unusual size. Yes! Uh -oh. Actually, ironically enough, it's the smaller ones that sound the loudest. Like they're like, like about uh, the first joint of your finger as uh, like that long, and they sound like crazy. Interesting. Yeah, the little brown uh, uh, crickets. Yeah, those are the ones. It reminds me of tree frogs in the forest. Yeah, kind of. Which is totally adaptable. This, for some reason, is a pitch that just, like, stabs me in the head. Yeah. <laughs> so I have an opening for this, if you don't mind. Like, right after he comes through? Yeah. Like, okay! So, like, a vampire shows up. Vampire like, shows up on his motorcycle, <laughs> little critter hides. Everyone's aware something's going on. And then, this guy shows up. So what I would like to do, Dev Kazik, run down the roof of the workhouse, jump down the ground, and just casually approach the party. He's gonna basically right. expose, expose himself. You should be able to move him. Yeah, okay. Oh, what do you know? There was somebody on the roof. He's elegant. Jump. He moves like water. An elf. You, vampire. You, thing. Is this an ambush? Why are you approaching us? Where is this place? Where am I? Eh, nobody knows you. Isn't that great? <laughs> you, pretty, pretty. This is Alton Star. You were here just yesterday. This? And then Leaf appears around the corner of the workshop you were in, and he goes, Raven? Leaf! <laughs> hey, what's up, buddy? More NPCs. <laughs> I promise they're not all staying. That's my favorite vegetable. <laughs> Crispy. So, what the hell's going on? Is this Alkansar? What the hell's going on here? Yes, this is a common miasma that flows off of the River Estrati. Like, that's what you asked. <laughs> I can't believe I've run into you after six months. Because he's been gone six months. Oh. <laughs> he thinks... <laughs> he doesn't know that there's timey-wimey stuff going on. I, I know. Um, and Leaf goes... How? I left your presence, or rather you left my presence two days ago? You were in Gib? Me? No. You mean here? Yes, from the northwestern gates of Alkenstar. Hello, everyone. I think you should watch for what's on, well, 
you're right there. Is that a monster? <laughs> and he manifests a shield, because he can't. Because there's magic right now. I quickly look to my left. And there's a Kazik. Can you please describe your Kazikness? So, he's elven in form, but clearly there's something off about him. We get too close, he smells like rotten flesh. They're ten feet away. They they can tell. Gross. <laughs> he's he's a little gross. He does appear to be a monster. He looks at the portal that opens, watches a vampire drive through on a motorcycle. He looks over everyone around. He simply says Kosawana. He's also wearing uh, a mask. A... Yep. He's got a mask that covers and... his mouth that no one wants to look at because that shit's piranha death. And did I catch it right that your eyes literally shine with a green inner radiance right now? Or is right. it just like reflection? So his the way I looked at him is when he's hungry, his eyes, his basically his irises are like a dull, smoky green. But when he's stated... They're like the pupils are just tiny little green dots. I thought everyone okay, was so ignoring me. I was okay. <laughs> You see, crickets are bad for your health. <laughs> I was gonna say, uh, I actually mentioned this right as he approached. I mentioned the mask because everyone actually is wearing a mask now because because of the smoke. Oh, it's yes. right. the smoke. That's pretty, right. that's pretty normal. Except for Raven. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, the mask that he's wearing is clearly more for disguise. It's not a rebreather mask. Oh, it doesn't have filters. Right. Yeah, yeah. Also, it looks like a bandit. It, it, looks, yeah, like it a looks like a bandit. It looks like a bandit. Yeah. Roguish. Nimoy very cast appearance. a shield whenever he lifted. That makes sense. Yeah. So, boom, yeah. on both sides of the street. Ah, is this a fight? Let us be, let us be done with it. Uh, I'll, I'll draw my dagger in the half lane. <laughs> ah, fight. Uh, ah, no fight. No fight. Please, everybody, uh, make a perception check. I guess it would be just perception. Oh, fuck. Fuck. I don't wanna. I don't wanna! <laughs> I'm sick. She's offering me sick medicine and tea and shit. God damn it. Fucking Echinacea, fine. Thank you. I love you. <laughs> I can't think of anything else that would apply to this. Perception, you said? Ha! I... <laughs> Whoa. I think I have to say... Wow. I think I have to say, actually, it would be your choice of perception or... Um... What do people remember? Please? Uh... Arcana. Arcana or Perception? Well, I already wrote Perception, though I have a high Arcana. I think I would like to give my Perception like a natural 20 there. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> Yay, I'm glad I added that last name to your familiar. It's a good name. Doomling. Yeah, Doomling. <laughs> I like it. He's a little Doom. Yeah. All right, so... Morg, did you roll deception? No, I rolled perception. That was a fucking twenty. Was that for? Was that for your stealth roll? Like, why'd you roll deception? No, you asked me to roll perception. That's the button. I know you rolled deception. He did af after that one. Oh, I don't know what the deception. Oh well, was for. that's nothing then. Okay, I, well, I didn't mean to do that. That's okay. But you rolled a really good lie check, so I was wondering if it mattered for something. No, no. no. Okay, so Raven notices, Sir Lin notices, Morg notices, Nimue notices, and fucking Neon notices. Jesus. <laughs> Edmund, on the other hand, rolled a three. So you guys can tell as Leaf approaches you all, the. clarity and width of the. Passageway through time increases. 
I just out of curiosity, uh, around what time is it right now? Wow, I have. Okay, so it's not summer. It has to be spring, and so spring would mean that it is six thirty. Like it shouldn't be as dark as it is, except there's smog. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, guys, what's going on? Wait, Nimue rolled a natural 20 and so did Morg. Both of them notice a very slight green glow from Leaf's backpack. Uh, uh, Leaf, behind you. Your backpack's glowing. <sighs> okay, well... Uh, he, he turns around, like, ready to fight. Cause there's, like, obviously danger somewhere here. Somebody doesn't like somebody, because this never happens. Um, so he's, like, looking behind him, he goes... My backpack? He pulls out his backpack, and he pulls out the bronze disc with the green lightning. And he goes, that keeps happening. I wanted to tell all of you. This is, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Raven, Raven, Raven. These are friends. They have taken over the mission that I was attempting to take over because I have been stopped by the local law enforcement. Apparently, I don't have any rights here because I'm a plant. Yeah, are you going to get in trouble for being out here? See? Well, that's fucked up. <laughs> and he says, but now that you are here and I'm not permitted to be on any quest for the government here, and he walks over to you, to Raven, holding out the bronze gear, and as he does, the temporal portal gets closer to Raven by five feet. <laughs> like, it's a huge rift now. Hmm. It's take I'd like back. to get a little further away from that. It now is a clear tunnel. Like, it looks like it's just... Street goes naturally into the rocky terrain. Like, you could just easily drive across it or walk across it or send a <clears> plane <throat> through it. Uh, we closed the last one by sending a demon through it. Anybody have any more demons? Edmund points at Kazik. It looks pretty rough. <laughs> That's a ghoul. I am no demon. Yeah, but you might want to step away from that glowing port unless you want to go elsewhere. Ra if you want to go elsewhere, then by all means. Raven in. turns around and looks at him and goes, That's where I just was. That's where I came from. That's Well, you are lucky you're alive, says Leaf. Huh. Oh, hold on. Edmund says, Son, you sound like a tin horn. Talking to Leaf. And otherwise, he's just staring through the portal. Yeah. Wait, so... Do we notice that as Leaf approaches, the portal got bigger? Um... Well, once he walked past the portal, that was obvious to everybody, yeah. And he's holding out the the cog as he walks toward Raven. That's just how far he's made it so far. Yeah, maybe maybe get that uh, get that mechanism thing away from the tear in time and space. What is that? They seem to be reacting to each other. This is the device that we found on... Oh my god, what the hell was his name? On the pile of worms back in the the temple, the Archive of the Sun, in Kibwe. It was supposed to come from this region. Did no one follow up on this cog? I was curious about it, but I didn't... I've been gone. I didn't think I was going to see it again. Just looks like a cog. Well, the entire reason that we came here and brought this thing is to... And he's, like, staring at the time break now. <laughs> is to find out who this belongs to and gives it back to them, and I relinquish that responsibility to you, Raven. Here. I don't want to break the law. Uh, okay. <laughs> it just kind of looks and, at and it. As soon as you touch it, you don't feel all that weird, but it looks like your hands are shaking. Like they're replicating their motion in different spaces. Whoa. Supersonic. He's like, he, 
Does does Raven notice uh, an apparent correlation between the item and the the hole, the portal? <clears throat> I mean, it kind of moved toward. Well, he's gonna he's gonna try to stick it in his bag of holding and see if that changes anything. Portal closes. I knew it. Did you see that? Wait, wait. Take that out again. See if it comes back. <laughs> <laughs> Let's mess with the fabric of reality. Wait, so we can we can literally just hop through time with that thing? I pull it out and see is? what happens. <clears throat> it's like I don't know. Let's see. <sighs> All right. I need everyone to roll initiative. Oops. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> My bad. Uh, Good question. Is the portal still out or no? Like, yeah, when he pulls it out, the portal opens again. Okay, cool. I can always put Does it back I up. My... So, Morg, <laughs> at the uh, top right of your screen, Morg, you can see a, the, the buttons across the top right. There's a chat message on the far left. The one next to that, two cross swords. Go ahead and right click on that. That'll pop out your combat tracker. All right. Thank you. Then. Once Jake adds us to the encounter, you can roll initiative, either from your character sheet or click the die in the encounter tracker. This is intuitive as fuck. Uh, Two. Wolf. I actually expected to go last. I didn't expect the road to go before or after me. Come on. I rolled two. Give me a break. <laughs> uh, do I uh, do I see any enemies that I can attempt to demoralize? Uh, you see a ghoul. <laughs> <laughs> you can yeah, try right. to demoralize me. I wouldn't suggest it. <laughs> uh, if, if he's not the cause for initiative, I won't. Yeah, I'm more intrigued on like, why we're rolling initiative. Oh, look. Where the fuck is Talon? Why didn't he show up for rolling an issue? Oh. Uh... He doesn't need to. It's fine. But I do want to add him to the combat tracker. <clears throat> I guess I... he would go on mine, wouldn't he? Oh, uh, wait. Yeah. Uh, I, I probably want to add Nia now, no? Because I'm going to... How do I add Nia? Um, you should be able to... Wait. I don't remember. Robert? Yep, right click the token and click the sword and shields button. The token. Okay. I thought maybe you could do it from the character sheet. Uh, I don't, I don't know of a way. There might be, but I don't know. It's coding. Oh, that's why you wanted to know if the portal was open because there's magic. Yeah, because I wanna do the thing finally. When I, uh, when I click that, it says it ex it takes him out of initiative, but he wasn't in initiative. That was for Talon. Yeah. I think it's probably fine. For this, Nia, because it's gonna turn into a non-familiar later. Oh, because he's oh, because I gave him the minion trait as part of his construction as an animated object. He doesn't get his own initiative, so it won't add him. Ah, that's annoying. Oh wait, that's so annoying. minions don't get initiative? Well, not if they're made as a minion of someone else, and he was. Yeah. If they have the minion tag, that that means they go on your turn. Oh, fair. Yeah. Which is why Hammy got his own initiative, because it was easier to create him as a main character. And Nya is excluded, too. That's annoying. So we're just going to have to remember. No, we're gamers. We don't remember things. <laughs> oh, all right, whatever. Oh, last roll. Um, did you guys see? Wait. Ah, it shows up a different color when it's a private roll for somebody that you don't know yep. is there. Yay. Just right. question marks on our end. Okay. That is what I expected. Okay. So <laughs> you pull it out of the bag, and yes, a hole opens, but it's not to the same place. Now you see a verdant jungle like you are face to face with an antelope eating and then it sees a portal open and runs the fuck away like hopping off through uh jungle you see beyond it that there's like 
uh, that it's much more sparse and there's rocky mountains and there's it's in fact it's full daylight there so there'd be daylight on the street too that's oh fuck sorry dude what raven i just realized i screwed him with daylight oh <laughs> <clears throat> only daylight in the portal though right well no it's shining through it's light so it's shining through, through the portal. Yeah. Ah. well i'm gonna put i would say the radius is probably 60 feet what if i put the thing back in the bag of holding not your turn yet ah touche <laughs> okay so let's make this person visible so now from the rooftop, like, right above Kazik, is a figure that looks like a gunslinger, because they have two guns drawn, but they have waving scorpion tails for hair. Um, I guess all of you could roll any knowledge that would apply to Alkenstar local, local history or lore of humanoids. or This is where re- weird ancestral roles could come up. Uh, flesh warp lore, like, do you guys have anything that uh, does that could apply to knowing the history of a person? I have flesh warp lore. If that's a flesh warp, uh, flesh what? warps are aberrations, so that probably would work, no? Yes, but it would give you different information. So, sure, roll it anyway. Oh, whoops. Um, Sir Lynn. Please roll a general intelligence check. Unless you have any abilities to remember shit really well. There are no general checks, uh, so I'll just roll. I got for okay. aberration, 31. I'll just roll arcana because I don't have any proficiency on that. Okay. Um, aberration roll. This person is a mutated human. That probably has been altered by the 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 area of the Spellscar Desert, or maybe even some weird toxic flow through that came through Alkenstar, even though there isn't supposed to be. Um, but clearly, they were human, and uh, it looks like you really can't make out other features because it's all hidden. They're wearing a mask and goggles and a bandana and gloves and a jacket, pants. In fact, I guess I should show this to everybody. Where am I? That. Oh, dope. That is cool. I'm sorry, what did Sir Lynn get for his role? <laughs> Garbage. Okay. Alright, on their initiative, 38, I guess I can reveal it now. Yep, I didn't expect this. All right. Red Devil, mute, please. <laughs> <laughs> I'm used to it. I can hear it. <laughs> no, that's just the sound that this person has with all the waving head things. Yeah. They also have a body full of crickets. <laughs> that's kind of horrifying. <laughs> it is, isn't it? All right, she's going to... Quick draw pistols, and I guess I just revealed the gender. Oh well. Um, and this sucks, but she's gonna sneak attack Raven for me. Welcome uh, back. Welcome back. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this could suck. All right, pop out there. Actors, and I'm glad that I renamed her to Mysterious Figure. Misty. Call That's her pretty Misty. good. All right, attacks on Select the Raven. Nevermore. Not said the Raven. Oh, my bad. Select both the raven. Alright, so I click her, I tee the raven, pull up the character sheet again, because you can't keep it open at the same time. This this is the main reason that I want to uh, 
divest some of my utility uh, reliance on Foundry because it's hard to keep the character open to the right page and do other shit on the map. Yeah. yeah. You just need to buy a bigger monitor. I have a big monitor. <laughs> At least to me. I said bigger. There's always a bigger monitor. <laughs> and I always want it. Okay. I'm, I guess I should just do this. Fine. Ouch. Oh, look. It hit. And crit. Is it going to... Ah, uh, ah. Uh, oh, my God. That's a... Uh... <laughs> oh, lordy. I would like. Uh, you have a reaction. Yeah, I'd like to use my reaction to uh, resist eleven of that. Okay, but I'm not finished rolling damage on it, and that's the first attack. Hold oh. on a sec. <laughs> By the way, uh, I, I next uh, sorry, Nemo had cast uh, shield before. Should I cast? That I know. Now? I know. I, I kind of forgot about that. Too bad Raven didn't think of that, huh? Okay, so nine. I can't catch 13. you. All right, so it actually does forty-seven because it should have doubled the regular damage and not the sneak attack, but it rolled it together, and I don't trust how well it's going to do. I guess I could just click on you and see if it doubles it correctly. No, it did not. It was on him. Okay. Yeah. That could cheat yourself. <laughs> okay, it still doesn't work right. Okay, so the 2d6 plus 4, um, I have to add... the hell did I just say to that? It's 41. 12. Oh, so 46? Yeah, 46. Okay, minus my 11. Yeah. 36, 36, 35, okay. And that was the amulet thing? Yes. Okay, so... She just, like, gets up and pulls two guns and shoots you. And you're, like, <laughs> <laughs> with the amulet. And she, like, reels back for just a moment. Wait, did you mean to apply 68 points of damage to me? No. Okay. <laughs> you can remove that and take the bright amount. I'll fix that. I'm sorry. I was checking to see if it worked right for the math, and I forgot that I was selecting you when I was testing it. So that is 85. Okay. Carry on. Sorry. Okay. So you hear... Give me the cock! You give me the cock? I thought you were going to say that. <laughs> she, sorry, she goes, Give me the cog! And she shoots him again. Oh, I'll give it to you, alright. You had to, didn't you? You just had to. I have an idea. How about we shove her through the portal and put the cog I'm, back in? I'm going to take this cog, flip it sideways, and... Ow. Hit. Let's roll damage. Not a crit that time, fortunately. Is sneak attack only once per turn? I hope. Yeah, I think so. Once per round. Or Is it? Or Is that got well, if you allow me to sneak attack every action, I'm fine with that. I, I thought it was every time you meet the conditions. I thought so, too. So a rogue can sneak attack three times if he's in place? Yeah. I, I think. I think it looks like... Uh, Robert's probably looking it up. I am looking it up. I don't see any limit on it. I've oh. always played it that way. <clears throat> really? Well, I mean, it it obviously depends on what the. I'm fine. I'm fine with that. I'm fine. I'm fine with whatever it gives my guy more damage. Not the enemy. You don't have. Any, uh, Raven doesn't have any way of avoiding being off guard, does he? Uh, no. I don't okay. think so. Yeah, as long as you're striking an off-guard condition and you're using Agile Finesse, 
Oh, the um depends. The sneak attack written for the rogue is melee weapon. Oh, or or ranged weapon attack. Never mind. I just need to keep continue reading. Yeah, I did read that recently. Four more. A ranged unarmed attack. Yeah, What's a I, ranged I saw that too. Attack? What the hell is that? Like you throw your hand at him. <laughs> it's foxfire for the kitsune or the I beams for the automaton. There are a couple ah. of ranged unarmed attacks. Okay, cool. Okay, so doing damage again. This time it's normal damage, and I'm applying it directly. It's going to shoot you again. Shit. Yeah, this time I can't resist it. Well, uh, but I thought you had that persistent resistance. I, I believe that is only on my uh, target of uh, esoteric lore. My Okay, well, there's another 32, and then she's going to shoot you again. Uh, does she have a reload property? Oh, thank you. I would say thank you for asking, but like missed, so either way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it says reload one in the, in the weapon. Yeah, thank you. Ouch. Oh my god. Okay, it didn't calculate this. It does more damage on the first critical hit. Uh -oh. I'm so sorry, dude. <laughs> you don't sound sorry. <laughs> no, it's funny. <laughs> An additional six. Oh. Yeah, this never happens to mix. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll, while I'll take one it time it did it when we're fighting the priest guy. Um, you... <laughs> I don't think you would notice this. Oh, you wouldn't. You wouldn't notice it at all. All right, whatever. I mean, it's poison ammunition, but you can't tell. Uh. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, God. Okay, so then she just, like, stands there proudly and just lowers the guns by her side. Give it to me now. You don't know what you're dealing with. And now we go to the next person. Chad, fucking NPC. <laughs> Can he shoot himself in the head? Oh my god, really? I gotta run the... <sighs> Poor Chad. Well, he's Let just... Him run away. Okay. <laughs> no. He can run through the portal. That's home! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm outie. I don't know. Maybe he would. No. Just, yeah, I want to get rid of him. <laughs> should I? No, I should keep him around, because nobody knows shit about a hydrogen bomb except him. Yeah. All right. All right, we can figure it out. Oh, I'm sure you can, yeah. I got a, I got a plus one to Arcana. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That cinches it. No problem. All right, Chad, target... The maybe th maybe he flees, just runs inside the open door next to him and hides. Why would he flee? Because he's Chad. Because he's Chad. <laughs> he ain't scared. He's not even sure this is real. I'm pushing use. Why is it not using? Channel elements? Apply yeah. effect? There it is. User but, John lacks permission to update Chad. Chat message. Huh. Really? But I applied that. You weren't doing that at the same time, were you? I clicked on effect kinetic aura, but I didn't push anything that said apply. <clears throat> well, it looks like it's working now. All right. Whatever. I know what damage to roll. Buttons are buttons take longer. Actually, do I know what damage to roll? Blast the bitch! Whew. Yay, miss. And that was a free blast. That was a 30 miss. Yeah. And then... Whoa. Oh, wait, that's not plus 18, that's plus 13. Roll the hit. 
And man, come on, Chad. <laughs> well, can you do anything else that's one action? Because I already used. Oh, I know. Yeah, I used two now. Extract element. Guide the timeline. Huh? Oh, you can do this. Yes. Why did you never do this? We'll probably just never have the opportunity. He covers himself in. That's cool. That's neat. So, like, armored plates grow along his skin and interlock. So he gets, gains a metal carapace. That's neat. You can also create a rusty shield. Sure! He creates a rusty shield, too. So he's suddenly armored and has a shield. It's at least dramatic. Sir Lin. All right. Is there a way to get up onto the roof from where I stand? Climb? There's no ladder. Climb, is that an acrobatics or athletics? athletics? Fuck. <laughs> but you can see the famous line, toss me. <laughs> Nobody tosses me. If that. you <laughs> can do something from down here, I can cast fly on you whenever it's my turn. That's all right. I will, yeah, I'll, I'll climb. So how many actions would it take me to run over and climb up? Or... You could try to high jump. That's athletics as well. Yes. Half a high, think, half a high jump is like a half jump. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, in my mind, climbing a building or jumping to the top of the building, climb would probably be an easier DC to hit. Yes, it would. So I'll, I will do that. So I will, however many actions it takes me to attempt to climb up there. And I will roll athletics. Or is there a climb action? Is that in... Yeah, there's a climb action. Yes, the using the universal or the basic actions macro. Roll. Hey, look Whoa. at that. Jeez. I do a cartwheel up the side of the building. <laughs> so how many actions do I have left? Uh, you, um, up, down, across an incline. Let me back in one sec. There is... Hold on. I should actually read this carefully. I suck at, like, speed reading. I just don't do it well. Yeah, I don't think you climb as part of your move, so I would had to move to the base and then climb. Oh no! Never. I, since I don't have a climb speed, I can only move up to five feet per action. Per action. But it's still only ten feet. Okay, so then, then since I crit, that's ten feet, right? The GM determines the DC based on the nature of the incline and environmental circumstances. You make an automatic critical success on incline that's trivial to climb. But you're not climbing an incline. Yeah, it, I mean, it's the same thing. It's a wall. Inclined wall. Okay, sure. Then it's one action. So you're up there on the roof with the shooter assassin person. All right. And um, yeah, I'll use my third action. Yeah. Uh, to run behind them. And that's my turn. Okay. Uh, oh, I do have my weapon drawn. I said I, I drew my weapon when that scary monster showed up. Okay. Um, you notice that the the scorpion stingers on her head are actually writhing of their own volition. And uh, she uh, turns, I guess it'd be 90 degrees, so as to not give you her back like she's okay. just too fighting in close quarters sounds good okay i need to get rid of an npc somebody <laughs> somebody shoot someone uh somebody shoot someone <laughs> what the fuck there's magic uh and i can use focus spells because why the hell not Yes, I know this is going to be cheesy. I, I don't really care. So, um, 
Edmund... <laughs> so stupid. Edmund pulls out a, a deck of cards, pulls out, what is it, three of them, and throws them all at once, and they magically uh, duplicate and pelt her all over her body. And then throws two more hardened cards. So the first one is actually a spell. It just looks like it's physically throwing something. And the second two are throws with his hardened deck of cards. Okay. Edmund, what are we doing here? So much fucking shit in the way. Strikes. Spell. How well will this work? Who the hell is Snacks? Vampire Groupie? <laughs> That's the bitch on the back of the bike. Oh. oh okay. <laughs> and I only see that because it's a girl on the back of a motorcycle. Normally I wouldn't call her a bitch, but you know. So, Alright, so the character's in play. It's like the t-shirts, like, if you can read this, my bitch fell off. Gotcha. He missed! <laughs> 34 misses. Come on, Edmund. Um, well, now he'll throw his actual cards and see if that hits. That's so much worse. All right. Well. <sighs> Did I put it? Damn side wander. She keeps she keeps wiggling. She's wiggling up there. Uh, Raven. Okay. Uh, first thing I do is put the cog back in the bag of holding. And all magic shuts off. Oh shit! Oh good good job with that. <laughs> <laughs> of course, he wouldn't even yeah, know yeah. that magic was shutting nope. off or that that was a problem. So it's not like I mean that's Alkenstar. You know about Alkenstar. True. No, it's a thing. Well, he wasn't here. He might not. Yeah. Did, did the light go off and the portal close? Yes. Then would my uh, regeneration kick in when the light goes off? Yes. All right. I'd like to not be. He's like, fuck you, casters. I'm healing. I would like to <laughs> not be quite so close to death. <laughs> it's on no haste, no slow. No, it's good. <laughs> You don't know. Sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, let's see. So that's one action. Is that one action? Yeah, that's okay. Then he's going to uh, tell Talon to fly him over here. Can I do that? Yeah. And with my final action, I'm going to make an attack. Well, Talon has a... Wait a moment. Are you going to hover in midair at the, off the edge and fight yeah. that way? Yeah. <laughs> it's on the roof. For, for okay. flanking sake. Oh, I love me some flanking. It's just funny. Okay, go ahead. Uh, let's see. Make her off guard. I'm gonna... I don't have a weapon out. I'll just make an unarmed strike. Not with that. Oof. Uh, and that's my three actions. Okay. I don't know how to move Talon with you, so I'm just going to be, like, annoying, I guess. Like I want to, I wish I could make Talon's token, uh, like transparent. Yeah, we could stick Talon off to the side because it, he's on me, unless he's not on me. All right. Uh, there. If you open the ta token settings, there's a token opacity oh. slider. Oh my God! Really? Yep. I do that. Okay, hold on a second. O open the token settings, and then what? In configure or something? Under appearance. 
token appearance. Holy shit. Wom. Hey. That's weird. Huh. Uh, but now you'll probably, when you try and target him, you'll have to move it off him to target Raven. Yeah. yeah. That's a good point. So that's kind of annoying. So never mind. We're not doing that. <laughs> Although now he's a ghost trout. So that's <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. I'm sorry. Uh, Jake, me. in case you didn't see it, I sent you a message on Discord. I did not. He never sees messages on Discord during the stream. I don't even get Storm's messages to take a break for emergencies. <laughs> you don't get or you ignore. Yeah. No, nope, don't notice it at all. <laughs> well, I guess ignore, because, like, I don't multitask. Everybody knows that by now. Um, no, I'm the same way. All right. So, yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good point. But... Oh, weird. So the curvature, I don't think so. Okay, so Robert, I guess I have to respond to you. I don't think it matters. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, okay, so I'm sorry. Um, was Raven, were you done with your turn, yes. John? Although I don't see a little okay. clicky thing to advance the uh, encounter track. Oh, yeah. Camera hasn't started yet. <laughs> oh, motherfucker. Okay, so we went e, 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 e. Um, well, there's no magic anymore, so that's cool. Uh, the druid. He's back to being useless. Oh, and his shield disappears. Yes, he is back to being useless. <laughs> he goes over to the workshop doorway and hides. And Snacks gets the fuck out the way! In fact, that's not supposed to be her name anymore. The token says it wrong. Whatever. I'll change it later. Um, so, yeah. I think she would Wait. probably just, like, Thanks. move away. Nimue. I'm thinking because I have nothing to do. <laughs> Uh, um, I can't. I can't even throw a grenade because I'll hit my. my <laughs> yeah. So yeah. No. You're, in the, you're in a, on a city street. <laughs> Name I will back <laughs> off grenade. and hide. That's it. That's it. Yay, lots of people hiding now. <laughs> no, definitely not Nyx, you're right. But if Nyx had no magical powers, that might be Nyx. Uh, I think yeah. Nyx is probably reckless enough to just run up a building and just slap. Yeah. <laughs> That's a very good point. Okay, finally, Morg. Oh, good. My turn. <laughs> so here's what I like to do. This is going to end so badly for her. Only problem is Raven's down there now. So what I originally want to do is climb on the roof and fucking kick her down to the ground. Well, I wouldn't be blocking her. Um, she could go off beside me. Well, but he still has to have an empty space to do that in. But you can, like, shove or... Uh, you, can, you can try to shove someone. Oh, okay, yeah. You can reposition or shove her. If you critically fail, she gets to move you instead. But you can do it. And everybody sees that instead of climbing, he sort of, like, jumps onto the building and then jumps onto the roof. Yeah, it's his leaping is fantastical. It's nonsensical. I'm going to say something like that. Roll athletics. Don't mind if I do. Oh, and the stupid field thingy goes away. Mm. There. Make sure to be up. Absolutely. Oh, well, not terrible. I think it's fine. That's fine. At twenty-three. 
And the attempt okay. is he's gonna kind of leap up and like two footed try to boot her ass off fucking roof of the house. Put her on the ground in front of everyone else. Take her advantage away. That's the plan. I'm not saying it's gonna work, but that's the plan. You got a 23. Got 23 the, tar- so. the target was a 36. That's a critical failure. Ooh. She pushes you back to feet. <laughs> Oof. Do you go falling off the edge of the building? That is not good. <laughs> <laughs> so he hits the ground with a thud, and he seems fine. Well, he came back down even faster than he went up. <laughs> Gravity's a bitch. Failing's fail a bitch. Gravity's not a problem. Right, so- dice. The climbing was part of your movement yep. because you're special. And so all of that motion to get to her was one action. And the shove was one action. You fell, that's not your action. You still have another action. Do you want to run back up the building? Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll pick himself up and just fucking leap up and grab on that fucker. Get back on top. Okay. You got thirst now for this fucking bitch. Do you want to move right next to her again? Then? Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Like, in the space of, like, a second, you ran up, fell down, ran up again. There's, there's, the, there's anger behind this. All right. All right. Now she gets to hurt she, me. She just, says, she just says, I don't want to kill you. Just give me the device. Why? It's not safe with you. Look at the damage you're causing. Hey, if we can talk about this reasonably, and I might give it to you if you can convince me, but uh, trying to attack me is not the way to do that. Let's talk about this. <laughs> Hold on. She goes. <sighs> if he stands down, I'll stand down. Pointing at Kazik. Because he looks pissed. <laughs> yeah, he's got his claws on. He's like. His non-moving <laughs> blood's fuming with rage. He's like, got hey, fucked up. Like, mm, hey, mm. stranger, let's just calm down a second. You can always kill her later if this goes south, but just, just cool your cool your heels. Does Kavis give a sign that he's going to calm down? He nods, but stays silent. Just remains there, she, quiet. She, she sheaths her pistols. All right. So are we out of uh, combat round now? I want to keep the the tracker there. I mean, yeah, do like whatever you want. Like for talking purposes? But I wanna keep the, yeah. I want to keep the tracker there because it's possible that someone Kazik! does something stupid. <laughs> and the fight resumes. Okay. All right. First off, what's your name? In the city, they call me Shadow Sting. All right, I'm Raven. What do you know about this device, and what can you do about neutralizing it? It needs to be brought to the Sisters of the Sand. They're the only ones who can safeguard it and keep its harmful energies from leaking into other worlds. Or, sorry, other dimensions. All right, where are they? That sounds reasonable. I don't want to leak into other dimensions. I mean, we were bringing it here to... See who its rightful owner was, anyway. You would never find it without a guide. They're in the desert. Uh, could oh, I roll... In the cave roll... Sorry. Could I roll society to see if I've heard of the Sisters of the Sand? Oh, yeah. You can. Ow. Is the place familiar at all, or not? No. Ow. Yeah. Ow. yeah. Okay. Society... Um, yes, and because I didn't think of society before, you also know generally who this person is. Mm. Um, They are a person who fights for the freedom of the oppressed and poor in Alkenstar. Oh, shit. (laughs) (laughs) Whoops. (laughs) Oh, I recognize you now. Sounds like a hippie. Just kidding. Kill her! <laughs> Stupid braids. 
All right. Uh, I'll, I'll say, all right. I'll sheath my, my weapon and say, all right, everybody calm down. This is about a fight. Uh, you also, because you were only society to know about the Sisters of the Sands, um, they are basically like people only go to them if they need um, prophecy help, like they're uh, oracles. Not in the game term sense, but in the, the prophecy in sense. In the oracles of Delphi so, sense. <laughs> yes. And so they are seen as just sort of like... Like, you could ask them for help if you're out in the desert and you really need it, but they're going to ask for some heavy payment back. And also, they are... They say that they try to control the... Not control. That's hard to do. They are trying to assist with the chaos of the magic in the Spellscar Desert. Nobody really knows exactly what they're doing with it, but other factions that have said something similar map out the magical areas and the destroyed magic areas. So they might be doing something like that just to offer a service to traders. They sound like a positive force. Yeah, they're generally not negative. Okay. You call it Scissors of the Sand? Yeah, Scissors of the Sands. And, uh... All right, so, so uh, she, she says, I never thought of trying to contain it in another dimension. That seems to be helping. And there's no portal right now, so I'll delete those writings. Hey, can you take it out of the bag? I miss magic. <laughs> <laughs> he looks back at you like, Actually, what are you talking about? Oh. Because he probably doesn't fully understand the whole magic thing in town because he's never fought in town. Whenever yeah, you take never... it out, I can cast magic, but whenever it's hidden, I can't use anything. Like, magic doesn't well, work. Each of those tears creates more weakening across the entire region. I've been following that one around town as he's created little rifts in his wake. And she's pointing to Leaf. Hmm. So Fuck you can leave. <laughs> you're not even on this mission in your room. <laughs> <laughs> that well, poor no, guy. That's his... Hey, yeah, can I get a break? <laughs> so you can take us to these sisters? Why would I do that? Just give me the device and I will take it to them and keep it safe. Uh, okay. Man. Yeah, I'll need to confer with my oh, plant before too. I do that. <laughs> oh, Raven sees only Raven now. That is so weird. I guess Kazik does too. Okay, so uh, the two of you see that uh, Sir Lin currently looks like a goblin, not a halfling. He's of the same height, roughly, um, but his clothes are a little bit more worn and like re-stitched and they're just not like not as bright and brilliant and they're definitely dirtier than you saw a moment before weird goes, ha, i knew it wait is that it is that where you were hiding she doesn't see it she doesn't what? see it she's he's on the rooftop ah oh, shit i want i so want to just <laughs> roleplay just nonchalantly saying oh is that it is that all you were hiding like that's no big deal <laughs> whatever <laughs> Oh, and Raven doesn't know him. He's just like, hey, what? You know, wasn't, right. that, a go wasn't that not a goblin? Is that going to go? But he's not really. It's not like one of his friends <laughs> turning into a goblin. Yeah. Right. The yeah. two people that notice are the people that. <laughs> the two brand new people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Darn. <laughs> and she goes. So Kazik watches them change to a, a goblin. Like he sees the he sees the transition. No, it's just a. One second. It's like you blow oh, this change. They got they got flicker. Yeah, basically a completely different person is just placed there. What is that? Is that the first time he's spoken? Yeah. Okay. Because Sir Lin changed to a goblin temporarily, and he, if he knows that, he'll point out the. What the hell is that? And Shadow Where is you? ignoring you. Okay, she like glances and then just looks back to Raven because he was the one like verbal <laughs> before now. 
Sir Lin's behind and, behind her, and Raven just kind of gives it one of these. <laughs> <laughs> I throw I throw my cloak hood up. <laughs> Nothing to see here, guys. Nothing to see. <laughs> uh, so she goes. This is not normally how I do things, but I can take you there because you have the extra dimensional space and I don't. So you can keep it safe on the journey. And she like puts a hand on the mask and just shakes her head. This is ridiculous. Hopefully spare parts from different worlds will stop showing up here. And tell that Gorin he needs to understand his magic better. It's like, that's yelling for her. Like, her voice is so raspy, that's the most she can mm. yell. Has he been doing something that's uh, exacerbating the situation? Everywhere he's gone, the threads that are the web of magic have loosened or become unraveled. He's causing toxic radiation to leak in from the closed down part of the city, the one that I was born in. It's all due to that device, though. I suppose we can leave him be, but he should be wiser with his magic. You hear that, Leaf? Hey, where'd you go? He's hiding in the doorway. <laughs> I'm going to the Barrel and Bullet Saloon. Goodbye. <laughs> He's like passive aggressive. I'm leaving in a huff. He doesn't drink. That's weird. <laughs> Actually, I, I discovered a way chemically for him to get drunk. Oh, cool. Because that's what you do when you're a GM. You look up how to get plants drunk. Let's <laughs> try a sap. What would you say? Special kind of sap. Oh. That might do it, yeah. Know. Fermented nah, tree no sap. Yeah, something like that. It's like drinking I mean, blood. Yeah, blood. Be, I mean, to be fair, alcohol comes from plants, so that tracks. You can get them high on acid, though. Alright, so I'm down one NPC. Thank God, get the fuck out of here, Leaf. <laughs> Alright. Bye, 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 Druid. What was that again? Go stay protected. <laughs> what did Red, what did you say, Red Devil? Who was that again? Oh, who was that again? <laughs> Great. <laughs> oh, shit. Um, Victoria snacks, goes back to the motorcycle just to, like, make sure it's safe. Like, that's important to her. Uh, so anyway, Shadow Sting says, if you, if you have a mission of some sort for needing information, then the sisters can help you too. But I don't trust anyone to carry that. I suppose I'm just going to have to stick with you by your side at all times. This is ridiculous. So what's your part in all this? What's your story, man? Uh, well, man. Um, uh, she... I guess I should specify that she doesn't look like female or really male the clothes are baggy and there's virtually no chest mm. and so she says i was born here mutant and the sisters gave me my purpose i suppose you could say i am trying to do the best good i can in this world and uh she takes off her mask 
and you see a face that looks very much like the predator. With the <laughs> awesome. Got a hot. mouth. So are those dreads not snakes? <laughs> or are those snakes on her head? No, they have scorpion stingers on the end. Oh, okay. Ooh. So they're just like really long scorpion tails. Neat. I love the predator. It's my favorite alien. I fear that it is actual aliens. Mouth and mouth. All right. Well, I guess uh, I guess we should go that way. I mean, what's what's next? We'll just head out into the desert, talk to these ladies. She looks at you queerly. <sighs> I shot you. Yeah. <laughs> I get that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> she goes sorry it's alright it happens you should... it's like the most non-apologetic apology you could get it's like here you, you want your oh. arrow back <laughs> bullets oh bullets that's bullets. right bullets not arrows <laughs> that would be even grosser <laughs> Here you go. No, I'm good. Thanks. His body will probably, probably eventually push out. him out. Yeah, in the middle of the regeneration, oh. just pop. Yep. That's right, and it hits the ground, and she goes, Oh, you're one of those. Yeah, I'm one of those. I didn't get that gift. I got these. And, and she uh, pulls up her sleeve of her coat, and you see black carapace like a scorpion. Whoa. Well, yes, we uh, we could accompany you out to your place, but we we are we're also trying to uh, go visit uh, a different place. Uh, I wrote that down. Where were we trying to go? The court's place. Uh, this would be the perfect time somewhere. Where is my? What? No, Sorry, there. Jake. What'd you say? I said this would be the perfect time for Kasich to jump in. <laughs> yeah. Did I pronounce that right? <clears throat> Kazik. Sorry, Kazik. Looks up or uh, over the rooftop. Down at the group and those that are on top. And uh design here for Koso and nothing else. Kosawana. For what? For Kosawana. He said I'm oh, yes. Kosawana and nothing else. Yeah, we're seeking him as well. We we have a small lead. Uh, but uh, tell me, uh, the 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 sister snakes, what direction? Uh, what direction <laughs> is uh, that out in the desert? I'd love to tell you, but I have to pee. Just <laughs> <laughs> okay. yes, break, God. Damn break, it. break time. This is what happens when I wait. Fuck. Very bad. <laughs> It's like a four-minute break plus music, so, you know, do what you need. Cool. Break time. I'll be back. Break. Searching the Spell Scar. In 4612 AR, a wandering priest of Bry named Harcourt the Fisher traveled the few safe trade routes near the Gebite edge of the Spell Scar Desert. Fleeing a band of gnolls, Harcourt ran deeper into the desert, hoping to lose his pursuers in the maze of canyons. He found a cave system, where he stumbled upon an amazing sight. A series of caverns full of gigantic quartz crystals, each of a size and purity the likes of which he'd never seen. Harcourt spent several weeks exploring the caves. When he emerged, almost no time had passed in the outside world. The gnolls were still there, and they captured him. During months of harrowing captivity, Harcourt penned a series of articles detailing his discoveries in the mysterious caves. When he finally escaped, he published his book through the Temple of Bry. Though full of confusing details, contradictions, and muddled facts, Harcourt's text was compelling enough to read that the primary cogs of Bry incorporated aspects of it into their canon. Over the next decade, the clergy of Bry visited the remote caverns Harcourt described. No one could duplicate the temporal effects Harcourt insists he experienced, but cogs were thrilled to find that the caves were indeed packed with flawlessly pure quartz crystals. The Temple of Bry in Alkenstar christened the site the Cradle of Quartz. Despite the danger of travel through the Spellscar, 
a few devoted brights still undertook the perilous journey to the site to commune with their deity in the central cave, which was surrounded by immense crystals. Over time, these pilgrims transformed the raw site into a small shrine to their patron goddess. In 4688 AR, the Cradle of Quartz was quickly and quietly excised from bright tradition. All references to the place were removed from the oral traditions and public written records of the church. Only the oldest cogs know the reason for this sudden expulsion. Sometime before 4688 AR, something came to the Cradle of Quartz and violently murdered every worshipper and pilgrim present. The pilgrim who discovered the massacre brought word to the Temple of Bri, but the clerics took the message to heart only after the pilgrim's mutilated body was found in the streets of Alkenstar the next morning. Follow-up investigations and divinations revealed that something within the enormous crystals of the Cradle of Quartz emerged from another dimension and tore every living thing to pieces. Although the beast left its victims in tatters, it seemingly did so without shedding a single drop of blood. The church refers to this creature only as the claws from beyond in the few documents that record the events. When primary cog Olaman Kosawana delved into the Temple of Bri's asynchronous archives, he discovered, among other things, the existence and location of the Cradle of Quartz. The 13th Ordinal, a heretical skelm masquerading as prophet, wrote the Cradle of Quartz could be used not only to dilate time, but to reverse it completely. True believers, according to 13, could undo errors of the past. After he managed to reverse engineer Pyronite in a matter of weeks, Kosawana knew this weapon couldn't be allowed to exist. He fled, carried by his clockwork sphinx to the Cradle of Quartz, in the hopes of turning back time and stopping Vashon Gattleby from inventing Pyronite in the first place. To find the exiled cleric and ensure his safety, and more importantly, the safety of his knowledge. Someone must follow Kosawana's example traveling by air across the dangerous mana wastes into the deepest reaches of the spell scar.
you talking? Um, not exactly an area, like that hasn't been defined, but it seems that when there's a rip in space, magic from that area somehow allows you to use magic here temporarily. That's pretty, that's cool. Okay. So yeah, all you have to do to be able to cast a fireball is damage the fabric of time. Yeah, I mean, why not? Fair trade. Uh-huh. Morg, I have I have had a request from the technical engineer that you remain slouching once you're slouching. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're. I mean, I'm on a couch. Your head got cut off. Oh. Adjust it if you need me to. Yeah, you can't sit that way the whole time. Hold on, she'll just Megan. Hold on. Did you say you're naked? Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet, baby. That's later. Yeah. That's the uh, that's the only fans part. Before that, that became better. like all sexuality, I actually was considering doing an OnlyFans because AJ was doing so for his lore. Hmm. I didn't know that was a thing. That's why I wanted to do that shit. <laughs> I want to open a fan store and Whatever. call it OnlyFans. Oh my god. Oh my god, John. <laughs> I bet there's going to be a cookware store that's called Only Pants. Ooh, that's good too. <laughs> uh, dessert fl- restaurant only flans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm still laughing about the Only Flans. That, that, that's the Slytherin campaign, is only flames. Yeah. Yes. yeah. That, that tracks. We should relabel them all only flames. <laughs> I'm sure it'll work flans. really well. With and watch your traffic go through the roof. <laughs> oh my yeah. God. Yeah. Listen, we have real weird all log on and shit. Like, like, oh. How do we get a million views? <laughs> yeah, but do you want to talk to those people in the comments? No. You mean the. Never mind. If it makes money. Yeah, what got a million views? I kind of missed out. <laughs> well, no, never mind. Nope. Don't worry about it. I'm, people, I'm, you're, too, yeah. you're too young. <laughs> the people would click on it because it says only flans. Ah, I see. I see. Like, like it's poor, I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. He knows what only flans is. And they'd be typing in the comments with yeah. one hand. What, what I didn't know was that before it didn't used to be NSFW. <laughs> yeah. yeah, at first it was just like you can put whatever you want on there and charge whatever you want. And so AJ was trying to take D D lore over there, and then he just got swamped with all of the other only OnlyFans accounts or whatever the hell that works. I don't know how that works, but basically everything else except him was porn. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> OnlyFans. That's why. Uh, I'm going to, from this point forward, if it's okay with you, John, probably just delete Talon so that he can just be used whenever. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. So what's this next? Because uh, Kizik's kind of ironing her up. Concerning the snacks? Because her name's snacks. Weirdo. It's not weird. It's hungry. No, you're weird, not your character. You, oh, yeah, you personally I'm... are weird. Maybe I should change that name from... I'm going to change that. <laughs> oh, we got Ed Pierce. There. Snacks go away. And Victoria has arrived. Oh. Well, that's that flavorful. Oh, she is. So is Snacks like the the chick that he feeds off of Raven? Yeah, she's a she's That's one of my idea. followers. I say one of them. She's the only one, but uh, you know, it sounds sounds <laughs> cooler that way. Yeah. yeah. Well, one is a positive number, so you can still say one off. Yeah. Uh, Shadow Sting, I guess, just jumps off the roof and lands because acrobatics. Yeah, she got. <laughs> Uh, she got some high numbers there, so yeah, she's probably fine. Well, I will fall. Uh, Sterling goes and finds the safe way down. I'll fall to the ground <laughs> in a retcon. 
And a wreck. Kids that just does a fucking backflip like a boss and lands on the ground. That makes sense. Name where it flops on the floor. Someone turn on magic. <laughs> Robert, what are you... Robert, like, four hours later. <laughs> Why did you go the long way around? That took the safe way down. <laughs> I, I, I rolled a nat 20 to get up. I knew I was going to roll a nat 1 to get down. <laughs> Well, so I took the time to, you know, get my cloak straightened out and get my hood up. Oh, you make me not breathe. <sighs> All right, so uh, Edmund says, you know what? I don't understand much of anything that's going on right now. Now, did you say you were friends with the, the plant man, the Goran that just left? Yes, we've been uh, adventuring together for some time. And I might understand that since he was the last member of this group that left, that all the other friends are also gone? Yeah, I'm not sure where they've gone to, but they have dispersed. Alright, so what can we do you for? Uh... I don't know. Apparently, I need to take this object to these chicks in the desert and get rid of it. I'm, I mean, I, I don't even know what, what I'm doing here. So, you know, <laughs> I'm just kind of ad living. But uh, apparently, it has something to do with this artifact I've got, and we got to get rid of it. Sounds like it's not good to town. All right, but forgive me. I don't know you from Adam. Oh. I don't, I don't know what you're doing here. And in your head, you hear, he'll betray you. Well, I, I'm Talon. I'm, I'm Talon. I'm Raven. This is, he switched for <laughs> this is Talon. When I say this is Talon, the cloak pulls up one corner and kind of waves. No, it doesn't no magic. Do magic. <laughs> he doesn't do that. I'm like, it does nothing. Hello, He's Talon, dead. where are you? <laughs> like he, he usually takes care of himself. He's like, like, hey, this is my thing. Oh shit! That's a, and that right. I'm not that crazy. girl over there is snacks. And you, you quit looking at her. He says to the ghoul. I'm sorry, honey. Your name is Snacks. <laughs> and she goes, No, no, it isn't. It's Victoria. Thank you. And she looks obviously pissed off, but restraining herself. And she's still sitting on the motorcycle. Or, again, I should say. Um, Edmund says, She got a bit of fire in her belly, don't she? She does. Uh, we're just all sitting here watching Jake roleplay with everybody. <laughs> I know, I'm trying to. <laughs> That's why I didn't carry on with Victoria. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, we we were actually planning an excursion out into the deserts ourselves to look for one Kaswana. Who's that? Uh, to uh, <laughs> local guy. Uh, Apparently stole. He the... rode out of this building the other night on a giant damn flying cat. We were trying to get some leads to find a recipe for pyronite, which can. Potentially destroy, destroy, destroy Alkenstar. They could yeah. put a hole in the world. I wonder what would happen if that were outside one of those big time rifts. Do you think you'd just destroy everything in both places? We should strive not to find yeah, out. Also, there's, oh, a, there's another explosive, I believe. Uh, what did you say? I look at a... Uh... Hold on. I look at a uh, chat and say, well, what's the other explosion thing? Uh, hydrogen something? Bomb. Hydrogen bomb. The most explosive thing you can imagine. It would take care of this city and the entire region. Wait, well, what? Uh, that sounds a bit far-fetched. Nope. It's from the future. Your future. Wait, what's this about a bomb? We need to find it. You see this? And he holds up the radioactive thing. Oh, I forgot. The, the armor he had also disappears because magic. And he, he holds up this big piece of metal that you can't read unless you have some weird... Oh, well, you have that Decipher script tattoo, don't do. you? I hey, do. Yeah. yeah. Makes this legacy once on. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> well, then, shit, you can see this as radioactive. And <clears throat> I guess you know what that means. <clears throat> Raven knows everything. <laughs> That's true. He's that guy. He's thaumaturge. He says, this is part of the outer casing of a hydrogen bomb. Now, we need to find this, or at least somehow know that it's not going to cause any damage. Because if it is triggered, well, we're all dead, no matter where we are in this whole region. I don't even know where this was found. Is there any way we can investigate where this thing was found in the desert or here? Well, I think the best way to do that is to find the owner of the workshop. Magic! Says Edmund, best way for everything is magic. Of course, we, we have, ain't got none. We have no magic. Everything sucks. Life sucks. We'll take you with you. We'll get it settled. <laughs> they was <laughs> literally just laying down face up on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I have no purpose. Dirt angels. This sucks. <laughs> And oh, na- if and you want to give up, yeah. uh, I, can use a, I can use a meal. Yeah. And, yeah, and now Nia stuck as a shadow, because there's no magic. <laughs> no, 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 he, he would pop out. He can't maintain a magical form. Oh, yeah, nice. So he's just a cat? <laughs> so he, he manifests again. Good, good, good. He needs a little witch hat. Does he have a little witch hat? You, like, put a little witch he hat can, on him? He's made a shadow. He can make a shadow hat. <laughs> oh, that's a good point. Yeah. All right. So, sounds like we have business in the desert all... All parties here. It does. Well, I'm willing to join your merry band and see this to the end. Nya points with a paw at Kazakh and he says, Not him. He's disgusting. <laughs> you heard him. <laughs> <laughs> the cat's the leader of the party. <laughs> What's your... Yep. The cat What's your story, ghoul? <laughs> <clears throat> he coughs up a finger. <laughs> Call, yeah, like, but it's not oh, one of sorry. his. Someone <laughs> <laughs> else's. I say, I'm after Koso. That's it. This side quest, this thing you want with his bomb, that does not concern me. I'll take it long if I need to, but what I want is Koso. I don't care about no fucking bomb. I'll be fine. <laughs> I don't care about bomb. Yeah. What's a nuke anyway? He's just crazy talk. No, I don't think you understand, says Chad. It can put a hole in the planet, basically. It will kill everyone in not just this city, but the two cities next to it. And I don't know, maybe the whole desert. It's a really big bomb. That is some powerful magic. Uh, since he showed up, Sherwin has been convinced that Chad is crazy. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Nimoy There's is definitely crazy. Yeah, Nimoy is crazy. Chad's well, starting yeah. to think he's Just crazy different. himself. Fun crazy. <laughs> uh, Nya stands on. Okay, sorry, it's a cat. Nya jumps on Nimoy's chest and says, "Get up, will you? We have to put this right and go find our other bomb, the little one." Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, guys, let's get out of here quickly, because I'm getting tired of this place. He turns around and smacks you in the face with his tail. <laughs> <laughs> well, we should prepare for the desert. Don't do anything about it. We need provisions, we need transportation. <laughs> I could probably handle the transportation. If we oh, had magic... <laughs> Uh. <laughs> yeah. Yes, your uh, you had a cart when you arrived yesterday, didn't you? you? Could retrieve that from the guard with a cart. We're, we're gonna get an airship. That's way faster. Oh yeah, were well, we gonna airship? Oh uh, yeah. I completely forgot about yeah. that. Didn't you boys have a carriage and a car? Like there was a, a car, right? A red one, and a carriage, and dragons, dragon snakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We they had mounts that they that the guards stole from them. So wait a second. We got this. I don't know contraption thing here. It's two people, and we got a carriage, and we got a car, and there's a cart somewhere, and we're taking an airship. What the hell are we doing with all these little vehicles? 
There's airships? I've only seen the cart, so I don't really know about it. I want to take an airship. That I will go. Awesome. I will go. Uh, I'll go book travel for us on one of the airships. You all, you all gather provisions. Well, that's right. We need. We need to buy stuff. So if we're kind of breaking up here, Sir Lynn will head towards. But, is there is like an aerodome somewhere that the yes. airships? Yes, uh, in the southeast of the city, there is. Um, how does it work? There are sky docks, and there are several dirigibles, blue balloons, and some other airships. Zeppelin. All right, sure. Yeah, Sterling would start. I guess, that I guess as a group, can we like say time to meet up back at maybe the uh, plan to leave tomorrow and meet back up at the the crate and barrel later. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the bullets and barrels. Or... Barrel. Yeah, the cracker barrel. Right. <laughs> yeah. Bed, bath, and bullets. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, all right, so I know I already gave John two pets, but now he has a shadow sting following him too. <laughs> It, it's your fault, Jake. It's not. It's no longer the player's fault for all these pets. Well, no, part of it makes sense for the story. Shadow State yeah. was interesting and useful, and she was like the only NPC in this city that naturally came with it that I thought I could bend to the story. Yeah, I'm just saying you're an enabler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I often am. All right, so shopping episode. Let's go. I am the guy that offers candy when somebody's on a diet. Um, shopping. Okay, sure. So, all right. It, just for future reference, so that I don't have to keep explaining or describing or whatever the fuck. Um, uh, fuck. Okay, I guess let's say that Chad would accompany Sir Lynn because he's from the future. He's curious about history, and this is the the airships of the past. Um. Shadow Sting uh, would generally hang around Raven, but he might not know it. Like, if he goes inside a building, she's going in with him. If he's outside, then he probably doesn't see her, because he's just... Hi she's hiding. Um, I don't know what the fuck you're doing with Victoria. Oh, I got something for Victoria. She comes to me. <laughs> no. Tug of War. She's never, half. She's, she's never seen it again. Are you sure? Uh, so are we going to the, to the bar and, I mean, what, what are we doing? I, Sir Lynn asked, uh, the group to gather provisions to get ready to head out. That's right. We were going to go shopping. Yeah, we about trip. Yeah. Yeah. She'd, she'd, she'd go oh. where I went. She'd stay close to me. That makes sense. She tends not to speak to other people. In fact, it looks like she is disdainful to everyone except for Raven. And whenever he's talking to her, she acts like he's a cult leader. Like, she's hanging on every word, and all of it matters. Nice. My god, that goose. Can you guys hear the that? dog? Yeah. That's that little yippy dog? Yeah, I gotta hate that thing. <laughs> Is that oh. a neighbor dog? It sounds like they're killing the poor thing. <laughs> I don't think they are, because it does it every day. Yeah. Occasionally, I've, I've said it before, but occasionally the lady comes out from down there and says to people passing by, the dog's fine, he's fine. <laughs> it sounds weird, but it's okay. Yeah. It still sounds like someone being strangled. So, uh, curious about how long will it take for passage or at least till we actually get on the ship? In game? Mm hmm. Well, we can expedite it. Be like, boop, done. I, I know, I know, but it uh, depends because uh, I may want to learn a recipe if it takes long enough. Well, for safety, the airships would leave in the morning when there's daylight. <clears throat> so I guess tomorrow morning. So 
You have a few hours? Sure, let's say that you can put in a day's work. Should I make a check or like a crafting check? Can you, can you take 10, like, Pathfinder, like in D&D? &D? Or you just take 10, just like, not an automatic success, but like, you assume that a roll is at least halfway? Is that a thing or no? I was just wondering. It's up to the GM, but usually that requires the feat assurance. Okay. Um, and yeah, I don't. I mean, oh, okay. Like, there's no point in making you add twenty five. <laughs> like, you roll a one and you succeed. That's what I'm thinking. Like, it's you know. true, but I could roll a crit check and use the less gold. Okay, go ahead. Good point. Roll. Uh, let me add specialty crafting. Yeah. He's like, no, I just wanted to be a cheapskate. <laughs> I wasn't trying to follow your rules. <laughs> Ha! God. Well, look at that. What I roll? Twenty. <laughs> oh, fuck! Uh, Forty-three. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh God. God! Okay, then you just pay half price. Oh, cool. Let me add that thing. One second. Uh, I can now craft infiltrators elixir, so we can disguise ourselves even when there's not any. Uh, when, when we can't do magic. I don't know how the hell that works. It changes your... Yeah, but it's not magic. Yeah. Right. It's polymorph, but not magic. That's strange. Yeah. All right. Alchemy doesn't so really it, make sense. Is Serlin able to secure air travel? Uh, yeah. Uh, they have a whole section that I could roleplay with you to... It's sort of like... It's sort of like the racist cult leader testing thing. Um, oh, a minigame kind of thing? Yeah. Like, you can find... It, you're supposed to have to find uh, people who are willing to book passage on the same ship you are in order to fill out the... Uh, oh. Well, with all of the pets and followers in <laughs> our party, we, we surely fill the capacity of the airship. Yeah, I think you would. Uh, also... It doesn't mention this anywhere in the story, but it's 50 gold a person. Oh. Pish posh. Yeah, you don't care. <laughs> uh, yeah. Can I, actually, can I uh, book it uh, uh, against my, my uh, letter of credit for the Baron? Oh, you dick face, yes. Yeah, I wrote, uh, I wrote an infinite money glitch into my backstory. <laughs> oh, <of> credit. <laughs> Does that work for all of them? Well, I'm booking I'm booking your ticket, so yes. Oh. Cheesy fucking bitch. <laughs> what, what a noble gentleman. Hey, it, I put a play this day in my backstory, and you said, yeah. <laughs> I know. Uh, it's still cheesy. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. And there's not, not going to be any consequences for no me wonder, at all. No wonder you throw <laughs> gold around like it's copper. Yeah. What the hell? Well, there certainly aren't consequences if you're leaving all civilization right now. Right? Yeah. Um, all right. Then I'm just going to say that the people that you're supposed to find are just on the fucking ship. Because it would just be, like, requiring you to make diplomacy rolls, and that's boring. Yeah. I've got a decent diplomacy, so yeah, I can I could round some people up. Take 10. The thing is, like, the, uh, when a when an adventurer expects and requires that certain people be on board for certain events, it has to happen. So even if you fail, it's going to happen. So why make yeah. it anything? That, that is weird. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So you are able to book passage on the second kiss. Oh. It is an old antique bo boat of a boat. <laughs> Uh, it's like the uh, uh, equivalent of a rust bucket for a car. So nice. it's been repaired over and over again, and it's actually been retired for a couple of years now, but the dwarven tiefling captain just comes out of retirement because she's bored. She just wants to go fly somewhere again. Say dwarven tiefling? Yeah. How does that work? 
Well, you see, when a daddy tiefling and a mommy dwarf love each other very much. Yeah, uh, so tiefling is so a half, half dwarf, half tiefling. Dwarf is an ancestry, and tiefling is a heritage. heritage. So, yeah, you can have them both. You can get some crazy combos with Pathfinder. They call me a monster. <laughs> Dude, you have, what, four <laughs> Elf. Elf. Cool. So, not bad. No, you also have Ifrit. And you also... Oh, you didn't take Orion, right? Oh. Okay. So, yeah, there's only three ancestries. Got a lot of blood in there. Everybody needs extra blood. <laughs> you are watching me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're telling me. Robert, that you cool. The vampire says, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Robert, did you notice that your character token is smaller than the others? Is that on purpose? <laughs> yeah, he's he's so small. He's a halfling. He's tight. I don't think I ever noticed. He's just small. He's a boy. wee lad. How tall is Serlin? Just for reference. Uh, I don't know. What did I write down? I don't know if I put a height then. You're like I don't care. He's short. Is that however tall he wants to be? About <laughs> a meter. Oh, it's so like ten feet. I call it three and a half feet. I don't know. What the fuck? Why is this a thing? What? Sorry, I'm trying to pull up the right map. Whoa, okay, so this is truly... How do I show you guys this? Well, whatever. I'll just do this. This is truly a big dirigible with big engines. Uh, no I tokens. think I need a token on the map. Motherfucker! Oh, the sound. It's it's a nice black screen. Awesome sound. Oh, there we go. That's cool, man. Cool. And here... Are we? Is this top down or bottom up? That's top down. <laughs> top down, okay. So that observation deck is where you would be if you're trying to see where the hell you're going. Gotcha. And this... Okay, and this is inside the ship. You can't even see anything, can you? No, there's no light. It light got here. quieter. That's Fuck. cool. <laughs> what are those logs? All right. What about That's the party token? Yeah. Oh. Um. So I'm putting you on the the actual like deck that you would be sitting in or standing in. Passenger deck. I think that's what it's called. Ooh, fancy. It's called the flight deck. So this is open to the air. Ooh. Oh. That's weird. Breezy. Yeah. Yeah. And then the upper deck is So Sorry, are we are we on the airship now, or did we fast forward through the night? Um, no, actually, well, I was about to, but I wanted to okay. see if you guys wanted to do anything before you get on an airship, like you know, assassinate or eat people. <laughs> I was uh, fast looking. I did recommend to the group to buy provisions. Did anybody do that? <laughs> Nimway uh, went. Nim Nimway Nimway fucked right off and went and did her own thing. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and Edmund would have offered his home laboratory for Nimue, so they're off together. Yeah, nice. So we gather up the next morning to go to the airship. All right, who has the provisions? <laughs> really? <laughs> I paid for passage for all of you on an airship with one simple request. I have a lot buy of provisions for our trip I have to the stuff. Desert. I have stuff. I didn't buy stuff, but I had it. <laughs> I didn't buy stuff, but I had it. Uh, I acquired it from yeah. somewhere. Uh, I look at my uh, my bag and I open it and I rummage through it and I, just, <laughs> and I pull out a, pull up a bunch of rations. See, and I throw them back. It's more concerned about water. 
What in the desert? Water. What do you need yeah. that for? Uh, that night, can I walk the uh, bad part of town until I get mugged and then drink them? <laughs> That's that you don't wait long. <laughs> The bad part of town is really bad. So yes, definitely. You you get fed cool. up or full of food. <laughs> you get fed, fed up. Fed up. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. What the hell was the name of Whatever, it doesn't matter what the name is because nobody knows what it is. Who cares? So uh Edmund says, um, Got some ration potions here. I don't think y'all want them, but they sustain. I I got a ration tonic, but I'm not gonna use it because I want to learn the recipe first. He goes, "Oh, don't you worry about that, none. I can teach you later. You can just drink that." A ration uh, potion is that like a protein shake? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> Yes, that's a good point, because it's not magical. It, it shouldn't be called potion, is it? Uh, like the ration said. tonic is magical. Oh, it is? Mm -hmm. Aww. I didn't know where I got it from. Thank you. Oh, well. Ah, you're right. There it is. I was looking on the wrong list. Thank you! Uh, so he would still hand a ration tonic to everybody. Um... I guess, except Nimue, because she has one. Yeah. I have a greater one. And Kazik doesn't need that bullshit. Nor do I. Yeah, I, yeah this one potion can feed me for the whole week. <laughs> <laughs> one Nimue can feed me for a whole week. <laughs> yes, murder hoboing has begun. <laughs> Is there, um, I'm trying to think, a uh, magic item. One is, does this exist in Pathfinder? And two, is it available, like, uh, from 5e, the Decanter of Endless Water, something like that? There's a Create Water spell. Oh, you're yeah, talking about the Decanter. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. That would actually be really useful. It's not endless. It's a certain amount per day. And weirdly enough, the one, the, the mug that the squirrel has that was drinking out of is endless. Okay. So there's not much that there's nothing that is infinite water. But yeah, if you had a decanter, hold on. You know what? Let's look up how exactly it works. Yeah. yeah now, is there, is being as we're in a desert town, is that something that they commonly have available? Is like the magic magical source of water. Uh, well, it's it's magic, so probably no. Yeah, it's still magic. But if, remind me, how's how does it work out in the desert? Is it? Magic on or magic off out there? Or magic, water. magic crazy. It's magic on and crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you could drink some water, you just might also fireball your ass. <laughs> Apparently I find that very funny. Oh, the decanter of endless water is actually endless, but they don't have any. <laughs> yeah, that's... Why, why would... Can I it's a seventh level magic item, so that's going to be non-existent here. Yeah. Is there a decanter of endless blood, perhaps? No! <laughs> and that would be the most horrifying magic <laughs> item for people to find. Is there a decanter of endless snacks? <laughs> yeah. have, have the vampire groupie just being a bag for me? You need to no. carry your own jerky, sorry. I have to go to the bathroom again. That sorry. picture of our pilot is awesome. Yeah, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. That's the pilot? Yeah. Oh, shit. She's smoking a spliff. <laughs> she is. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm Damn. Good thing there's nothing to run into up here. Yeah, nothing at all. Ever, there's at definitely all. Definitely no, no flying monsters or anything. I mean, we're not playing a game here. We're just going through a story. Should be fine. <laughs> definitely no interactions at all. The Spell Scar Desert. Although its rocky bluffs, dry winds, and stunted vegetation make the area more than daunting, the Spellscar Desert harbors far more dangers than a desert's mundane hazards. The bedrock beneath the sands is racked with raw, wildly unpredictable magic that still leaks into Galarian through the tears and reality inflicted by the Archmage's necks and Geb. 
The furious battles they fought more than 4,000 years ago turned the region between their mighty nations into an inhospitable waste. In the Spellsgar Desert, many creatures contract a gradual illness that, over time, makes hair and fur fall out on clumps, imparts dry coughs or other internal ailments, and causes mutations, stillbirths, or worse. Some magical creatures simply sicken and die of indiscernible causes. Fortunately, these conditions usually clear up with time once outside the hazardous desert. After generations, however, creatures that remain within the Spellscar have become all but unrecognizable. They might grow to phenomenal size or gain bizarre coloration, sprout bony protrusion or tumorous masses, or grow additional limbs and sensory organs. Many of the humanoid mutants of the Spellscar Desert, formerly humans, dwarves, gnolls, and other pushed to the outskirts of civilization, are now all but unrecognizable. Adventuring in the Spellscar Desert A band of hardy travelers might brave the Spellscar Desert for any number of reasons. Academics might seek information about the long-ago clash between Nex and Geb, while other historians might include knowledgeable treasure hunters seeking relics from that age of impossible wonders. Brave scholars might seek to understand the storms of twisted magic that rack the land, either to better predict them or to harness their power for their own ends. The people who inhabit the Spellscar Desert sometimes harbor secrets of interest to the wider world. An escaped criminal hiding in the desert might be the sole keeper of valuable information, or a mutant gang might know where to find strange ruins or unique firearms. Plucky merchants might enter the desert only to cross it quickly, shuttling high-value items between Nex and Geb. Regardless of the reason that travelers brave the desert, it's wise for all of them to keep the following points in mind. 1. Prepare for bad weather. Outsiders assume there's only one kind of weather in the Spellscar Desert, dry and hot. This oversimplification ignores three dangerous environmental conditions of the area. First, temperatures plummet after dark as the land quickly surrenders the heat it soaked up during the day. Nights can be cold enough for frost to form, depending on the season. Second, storms regularly scour the Spellscar Desert. Swaths of land entirely devoid of life likely have the worst weather and should be avoided. Finally, Water in the desert comes fast and hard. Springs might pulse with primal magic erupting in geysers while riverbeds swell with each rare rain, sluicing water through the thirsty landscape. In narrow canyons and dusty gulches, flash floods are both common and deadly. 2. Stay hidden and move quickly. Predators in the Spellscar Desert come in many varieties, and all have honed their talents and natural gifts to survive the harsh climate. Monstrously mutated animals and beasts are common, but bandits and other two-legged predators are just as canny and dangerous. It's important to wear concealing clothing and to seek cover when traveling or camping to avoid becoming a target. Even travelers convinced of their combat prowess should remember that there's often something bigger or tougher prowling the desert and apply caution. Worse, some magic-twisted predators might have strange senses, such as the ability to scent despair or see souls. So a traveler can't ever fully assume they'll be able to wander entirely undetected. Those crossing the spell scar should stay on the move when possible. 3. Looks can deceive. For a place of openly brutal terrain, the spell scar desert abounds with hidden perils. The most significant of these are mana storms. Although genuine storms are dangerous, it's usually possible to see them coming. The effects of a mana storm, however, are random, occurring with no warning. One moment magic works normally, and the next everything changes. Rains of squealing leeches can patter down from a cloudless sky, or gravity might suddenly shift, but only for random creatures. Beyond the menace of mana storms, creatures and people also might not be all they seem, leading travelers to misjudge threats. A rail thin figure in a tattered cloak might be a deadly assassin robot, or a hulking mutant might be an afflicted scholar with intellectual sensibilities. Even the terrain can lie. Clean water might rest beneath a crust of dust, and mirages are all too common. A wise traveler never makes decisions based on appearances alone. 4. Avoid Abandoned Technology the magic that flows wildly through the spell scar means that some travelers, especially those from nearby Alkenstar, rely on technological marvels to survive. 
they might use a steam-powered wagon to cross the barren terrain, a mechanical condenser to pull water from the air, or a large-bore firearm to keep predators at bay. When technology breaks down in the desert, there's usually little to do except abandon it to the elements. The desert is therefore littered with broken technological inventions, some of them unique contraptions that failed at the worst possible time. Wasteland gangs sometimes recover these devices, particularly weapons, and try to repair them, but such tinkering can leave items even more dangerous than before. In any case, it's best to approach any abandoned technology in the Spellscar Desert with caution. It's likely failed someone else in the past, and could do so again. And we're back. I have a 12 minute long audio, and I don't know where the hell that's gonna fit. Hmm. You can do it at the end. Good. Doesn't that seem like not as useful? And, and actually, why would people stick around? Okay, they might stick around just to listen to it. I don't know. Or the it. intro, maybe. Tell us well, in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> or we just take a really long mid break one time. We can also cut it in half and do half for yeah. one and half for the other. I'm not sure where you can make sense of it cutting, though, but okay. it's your call. So, yeah, I guess we'll just divide, divide it in two. <laughs> I love that it's easy to find lore for a Pathfinder. Yeah. Or rules honestly. or whatever. It's so good that they, they're honestly. so sharing. Yeah, uh, honestly, yeah. I, I, I don't know if, if probably I should have this, but right now I'm using the interactive map to kind of symbolize Nimue's uh, actual map. The Galarian interactive map. What do you mean her actual map? Because she's a planet? No, she has a map. Uh, oh. What's the Galarian Interactive Map? Hmm? What uh, is the Galarian Interactive well, Map? I will it's a website. Send it. Yeah, I will send it over. Super useful. Uh, from Discord. Okay. Uh, slithering. Yeah, I think slithering. I just saw Nimue's Shadow Cat in Morg's background. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you, you uh, can see the interactive map there. Um, sneaky. Yeah. Oh. Gone now, but uh, I'm using that to symbolize her actual map that she has. Oh my God, where has this been in all my life? <laughs> there was actually an older one, but it got uh, basically abandoned for this new one. Okay, so I see Gitna. This is like, <laughs> so look at the entire Alcantar city area with Spellscar Desert. This is like more detail on where cities and locations are than the maps and the books that I've been reading. And that's sad because there's almost no detail. Yeah. Oh, yeah, good thing uh, you have this now. So, yeah, we can use this. Cool. But I'm going to close this because my computer will run for shit. <laughs> Um, okay, so, uh, you asked Robert for magic water items. Oh, right, water. I, I was looking over break, uh, something that also could work in the, the treasure vault book. There's, there's something called journey bread. It's like a loaf of bread. You eat it and that's everything you need. Including the water? Uh, yep. Journey bread contains a mix of fruits, nuts, and grains with an alchemical boost. Eating one journey bread provides all the food and water you need for a day. Sounds like if you subsist on nothing else for a week, you become temporarily immune. Sounds like fruitcake. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah, um, Edmund can also create water. Yeah. Okay. Right. Then that's that's probably enough. Yeah, we're fine, probably. That's not why I took divine, but he can create water. I think I only gave him one healing spell, and everything else is alchemical. Yeah. Yeah, I got uh, mostly magical potions and a few elixirs here and there. So, Nimue has a sorted for rations, and uh, we yeah, control we water, create water for our, our water. Yeah. So, all right, we're good. All right, I need to know what the hell the layout is. 
of this stupid map that I'm looking at, or that you guys are looking at too. By the way, uh, do you guys have any rations of any kind? If you eat, those who eat. <laughs> yeah, I do. I have whatever the, the basic kit came with. I got her. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I got par stacks, but I don't. Uh, I, don't. Yeah. I got two weeks worth I, I want par stacks. Yeah, you, you don't eat normal food, right? Me? No. Kazik um, oh. eats living flesh. <laughs> All right, so yeah. we have a uh, limited time on the rest of the adventure tonight, so I'm going to skip by the uh, pleasantries of meeting all of the other passengers of the crew for now. Or the passengers and crew, I should say. Um, and I am going to just sort of say that you guys are on the airship, and I'm still amazed that you paid for everybody. That is not anything I expected. That is weird. I expected everybody to be like, I'm not going to pay for that. We're just not going to take an airship and walk across the desert. I was ready for that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to walk back, I'm sure. Once, once, once we crash this thing. <laughs> <laughs> you just... I, know, I know how You do, work. don't you? Although, like, you know, sometimes the vehicle is fine. Never mind. I'm, I'm not going to lie. It's going to get destroyed. I, we're going to hit a bird. I should wait till we're at maximum altitude and then pull out the thing. The rocks exist in the uh, <laughs> <in laughs> Pathfinder. Oh. I ran a campaign once. I gave my party a, a cloud giant castle that flies around. Uh, they parked that shit and left it unlocked and went away. <laughs> <laughs> Fun. Why would you do that? Yeah, so... Responsibility. That's something about players like they don't appreciate That's things. Players. Actually, people don't appreciate things unless they've worked for it. So, like, if you give it to them, they're like, "Fuck it, I don't care." Well, I mean, they they killed the previous. This owner, was a so giant castle. They, they earned it. Wow, that cloud giant castle. Surprised. But they lost it. Around. Well, they, no, I I didn't take it from them. I just had uh, when they got back. <laughs> You guys seen the the movie The Other Guys? Yeah. Yep. So when they came back, there was scrawled in, in paint across the front of it. Thanks for the F shack, Dirty Mike and the Boys. <laughs> <laughs> you have to see the movie. It makes sense. And I'll probably demonetize you if I describe it. <laughs> if you describe it even? That sucks. Wow. <laughs> no, it's not that bad. It's 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 a dirty joke from the movie. Okay, does anybody know how That's an funny. airship works like a dirigible? Not, not like, functionally as far as how it flies, but, like, what floor you're supposed to be on. Because as far as I can tell, the only um, outside air you have is on the observation deck. I'm trying to figure out where the hell encounters can occur. <laughs> oh, okay. No, never mind. I got a picture of the thing. All right. So it is just the observation deck or the front windows in the, uh, wherever the fuck you are right now. Flight deck. So... On the flight deck, only the front windows see out, and there are a few portholes, basically, to the left and right inside. So if you wanted to be able to be in the outside air, there's a back... Oh, okay, so you see where the uh, dining tables are on the south of the image that I have up right now? Down here. Right here. So... Over... Uh, no, we, we are blocked by... Yeah. Like... Oh, my God! Yeah. yeah. Um... Yeah, I can't you can open that door. There, I see it. Oh, nice. Oh, there you go. Okay. Ooh, an open air bar. Yeah, that's outside. actually open to the air, oh, which seems dumb, but it is. That's cool. So that is open to the air, and the only other place that is open to the air is the observation deck, which I'm going to switch to because that's the most likely spot that you'll be. That is here. Okay. Oh, this is literally like a flying submarine? Yeah. Like oh. All right, so can someone explain to me how to turn the volume down? I uh, got it a little uh, sound, uh, the little music uh, note on the on the little tabs in the corner. Top right. Yeah, top top right, top right music note. Okay. I gotcha. Thank yeah, you. It's super loud. Oh, sorry. Well, I like it, but just and you know, the yeah, lower it a little bit. There we go. Beautiful. Thank you. Okay, this is very, very weird. This shit is not written right. I don't like it. Alright. 
So, uh, you guys get your own rooms on the ship, and I am going to show that as well now to see if you can see it. I guess it doesn't actually matter. You have your own beds in, in different in separate cabins. If you want to bunk up two to a room, then oh, actually, you have to. That's how much room there is on this thing. I, I bunk over snacks, <laughs> <laughs> and then no one sees it again for no reason. Uh, if you wanted to bunk up with Edmund, he speaks Necrol. You guys could like relate on stuff. <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> this is insane. Okay. So you guys take off on the airship with much fanfare and applause from a crowd that has gathered because the airships are sort of the pride of the western half of Alcan Star. So there are people out there with uh, banners and flags that they're waving around. And maybe even some balloons. Yes, there's actually handheld balloons. There would be. It's it's basically helium, which is the same thing that's in this uh, airship. And uh, there's lots of waving from the passengers, saying goodbye to everybody. And the captain finally relaxes, and she goes, ah, I'm alive again. Does this old heart good? And she starts shouting commands that don't make sense to you because you're not on, used to being on an airship. And uh, you... As soon as the city walls pass underneath you, you have magic again. Yes. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> then you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. finally. <laughs> finally, I don't have to walk. <laughs> I, t- I tell Talon, next time that happens, let me know when he's back. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, then you get, like, a tap on your shoulder. Okay. Like, ah, good to know. He can communicate with me, can he? Telepathically? I thought he was telepathic. Yeah, yeah, he can. Okay. It's even on a sheet. Okay. That's right. He just has, like, a, a very eager personality. Like, I picture Dr. Strange's cloak having. Mm-hmm. This is always active. I was thinking I could use it as a bed because it could float. <laughs> you have your own hammock. And, and, it's a, it's and a hammock. It could, yeah. it could hammock, adjust yeah. itself to keep my spine aligned and be super comfortable. <laughs> Holy fuck. That is a great use. Did you take the lumbar support ability? <laughs> That's a great use for an animated object. Isn't that neat? That's actually pretty cool. Yep. I like it. I was, this week I was trying to think of things I could do with it. I'll sleep on it. Yeah. It takes most of the day to get over the last city that is considered part of Alkenstar to the east. And as you pass that last non-existent, really, border, you start like hearing thunder from way far off, and there are no clouds. Those who have experienced the glass sandstorm no, there's something weird going to happen. The thunder from Dun Under. Which of us know what that is? Oh yeah, that's not you. Um, yeah, Sir Lynn was there. Oh my God, was he the only one? Shit, yeah. yeah. Sir Lynn's the only one who knows that this is probably a bad sign. <laughs> I'm sure. What's her name? The Snake Sister knows. The Sand Sister. Yeah, but like if. Oh, 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 Shadow Stain. Um, yeah, Shadow Yeah. Stain. Okay, so she, like, leans down to you, and she says, close to your head, but not a whisper. Like, I mean, not in your ear. She whispers anyway. But, yeah, she goes, snakes. Snakes? You watch. I bet it's snakes. Are we all in the same area? I don't care. You can be wherever you want. But most people during the day are in the area that is currently on the screen. And that is the flight deck. So it's just, it's basically like you're in a diner and you can see mainly out the front and side windows a little. 
and Nemo is not really making anything right now, but she's kind of testing out and playing with her clockwork tools. Oh god, great! Yeah. <laughs> like a little duck robot crossing the table. <laughs> Oh, that's where she is. I can get rid of her. What? Ah! She, she no, there's off. another copy! <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, that one. Thank you. Storm is so damn supportive. Storm rocks. Let's all hear it for Storm. Oh my god, you're in bored. Her reply to you was... <laughs> Okay, I'm she's just good. Producing. She's our producer. Got to have a producer. She's also a producer of tea and dice. This is so insane. This is insane. All right. So the, <laughs> I don't think there's any way that you guys can resolve these things that I'm coming up with. So that's going to be fun. <laughs> um, nice. I'm going to need two different things. One is perception rules, please just make note of them and then tell me when I ask and will saves. Could I roll will save also for Nia? No, it's cried. It's fine. Oh, actually, technically they do have to make separate saves. Yes! Sorry. Oh! Are you listening to the dog? Yeah, I was trying to figure out if the dog is outside our house or... No, it's coming through the speaker. Oh, okay. (laughs) No, that's not the strangling dog. That's the other dogs. All right. So, all of a sudden, because you couldn't see this coming, there is a dark cloud bank directly above you, and it looks like it spreads as far as you can see. So, like, it went from clear skies, maybe a little wispy clouds, to black storm clouds as far as the horizon. And then you hear a bunch of, um, thud, on the balloon. Like, all over the distance of the the airship, it increases in pace. So there's, like, and uh, please roll me perception. Or sorry, tell me what your perception checks were. Twenty-two. Uh, for Nimue, thirty-one. For Nia, thirty-three. Thirty. I don't know how to look that up. <laughs> On the chat. Uh, did you roll? Yeah. You don't look it up. Got it. Got, he rolled. Got, he rolled. Got, got thirty-two. Wait, uh, Red Devil, did you say that he got 32? I can't say, yeah. Okay. So what we were talking about, Morgan, is the roll that you just made. That's your perception check. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, so... <laughs> uh, Sterlin notices that there are long, ropey objects flying past windows. Oh, ropes. Everyone else sees that they are snakes... Those of you who got above 30, notice there is something wrong with the front window. It looks like the the, uh, the reflection in it is warping, like it's melting. Hmm. Something weird going on. That's, uh, yeah, that, sorry. Uh, more. There appears to be a bunch of ropes falling off the dirigible. Is that normal? Those are snakes, not ropes. You sure? It's all right, people. It's not my first snake storm. You'll be okay. Snake storm? What? This is snake this storm. Is a snake storm? 
<laughs> and Shadow Sting just nods. <laughs> it rains snakes. Yeah. Why did it have to be snakes? <laughs> um, can John can Chad fly? Yes. Okay, that's what I thought. I don't know if he's brave enough to just jump out of the you know, who cares? We'll we'll do it. And yeah, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> Who's expendable? It's not expendable. And now everybody, uh, tell me what. I mean, kids that can fly. <laughs> okay, so did anybody get under a twenty-one on the will save? Yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> no, I did not. Okay, so it was only two of you. Because I rolled a I two. Mean, yeah, Fuck Edmund too. Okay. So the three of you suddenly lift off of the floor of the ship, and you are weightless. That's Edmund, Nimue, and Raven? Mm-hmm. And Nia, apparently. Oh, wonderful. Uh, and Talon, are you doing this? Uh, Nimue is going to activate her removable arm to just not float away. Or actually, no, because we're on a moving ship, no. right? Yeah, yeah. Bad idea. Yeah, yeah. My mom would not do that. <laughs> Wait, she has a removable <laughs> arm? An no, immovable, I'm, removable I'm, arm. I'm, yes. Immovable. <laughs> a removable, immovable. Immo- that's hard to say. <laughs> yeah. it, it's, it's a immovable rod. Yeah, it's in a fucking... That has an immovable rod. Oh, yeah. Ah. That is insane. Great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, the immovable rod would be bad. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's why I, I stopped all shipping. Yeah, breakers. Um, Shit. <laughs> Talon says in your head, John. Um, no, but I bet I can go faster now. And he starts flying forward. <laughs> Wee. <laughs> all right, now you can roll an ish. All right, you want, we need tokens on the map. You have a party token. It's good enough. All right, hold on. Will that work? Uh, I don't know. Can we do an initiative without tokens? Uh, nope. That, uh, we cannot. Probably. That would be weird. Nope. You have no tokens in the scene. Oof. Well, what's uh, that for? Let me, let me just... I'm going to drag mine. Yeah. There we go. I'm here. Hmm. Oh! Okay, so if you're out there, then you got smacked with a snake in the head. Oh, no, then I don't want to. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> nope. yeah. uh, uh, here. There we go. Actually, what are am the I talking snakes, about? Uh... It's Nimue. She's going to be sitting down somewhere. Not, yeah. Are the snakes happening to roll deception or diplomacy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, diplomacy. They go. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm moving Raven onto the scene. Oh, there I am. And fucking Chad. Fucking Chad. (laughs) (laughs) Poor Chad, man. Yeah. Poor Chad. How do you remove a member? Does he go back to... Oh, thank God. I thought I just deleted leave. I leave. Fucking leaf on the wind. That's silly. <laughs> you guys made the joke first. That was not me. I missed right, it the so first time. Now I guess I'm highlighting. No, it was a few weeks ago. Ah. It was Sir. Uh, it was Robert, not Sir Lynn. Whatever. <laughs> okay. Huh? Why are there not? Did I just remove everybody from combat? Yeah, you, you reset it. Oh, that's fine. Um, you can go back to where you rolled in the initiative, and I think you can click on. Uh, no, the button's not there. Okay, roll again. By the way, Jake, this airship is really cool. Very interesting. It, is. it doesn't make sense how it has a balcony, but yeah, it's 
so pretty cool. It seems dumb. It seems really, really dumb. Okay, I don't need that person. I don't need that person. <laughs> Can I try to intimidate one of the snakes? <laughs> that's part of my battle <laughs> yes. What are snakes afraid of? Do you want to make it sound like a mongoose? Uh. Mongoose, yeah. Yes. <laughs> honk, honk. So that's what mongoose sound like. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's goose. It's literally How many mongooses have I heard in my life? Wait, we got, we got a long rest, right? Yes. Oh, yeah, I should click that button. I don't think it does anything for me. How are there two morgues? I'm getting rid of a morgue. Yeah, I'm not sure why. Oh, we're doing perception. I Trade him over. Oh, oh, it's because uh, you and I both put one on. So I'm going to just delete the one that I put on from the map. There you go. Threat trivial. Trivial. You don't even know what the monsters are. How does it know what the threat is? All right. 36 to demoralize the snake outside my window. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Great. You scared the crap out of that snake. Yeah, got him. Oh, I should add this to a niche so I know when something weird happens. And that would be on 18. Okay, so um, I rolled for you, Morg. So please just readjust your niche to whatever you actually rolled. Could we change our own? I don't know if oh. we can. I think you have to change. All right, well, then, Morg, what did you roll? Ice moves. What? Um, That's roll. What? Did you roll for initiative or yeah. perception? Right. All right. Yeah, he's just always. Yeah, he just rolled. I don't think he rolled before. Oh, no, I did not. Okay. So 17 plus. Yay! NPCs 17. don't go first. Yeah! All right. <laughs> so if all those initiatives uh, look sense, look sense, make sense, look good to you guys, then I'm going to start with Raven. Okay. I want to do an esoteric lore check on these sky snakes. Thirty-eight. You get your bonus. They are all varieties of snakes. Most of them are poisonous, and most of them live in the desert, but not all of them. No weaknesses. There's, there's a ball python. No, they're just snakes. Oh, you've heard of this before. It's called snakes. <laughs> snakes are attacking an airship. I want to get these motherfucking snakes off my motherfucking airship. On this motherfucking plane. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out where I am on the board. I see me. I don't see anyone else, so. I'm just here. We'll figure it out. I wonder if I can change the view. I couldn't see myself until I clicked on my icon in the counter tracker and then I pop back in. Try that. Oh, no, I see where oh, I okay. am. Now can you I don't see. That's where he starts. I don't see where you are. Yeah, same. He's on the like the outside deck area. Uh, I don't know how much map you see, but it's like it's, like, it's south. Huh. Or you consider it south or down. Okay, so what in the hell? I'm trying to fix the lighting here. Is there you go. Oh, there. Yep, I, we can oh, see everything now. Like the the options that the toggles that are that don't make sense to me for what they say. <laughs> there we go. Okay. And you can't see all of the uh, many, many enemies that are hidden, can you? No. Nope. Great, there aren't any. <laughs> cool. Yeah, there's no hidden enemies. It's fine. It's fine. There's no 
threat. <laughs> this is going to be fucking bizarre. Fucking bizarre, but that's what you do. Okay. Um, so... Uh, this guy is snakes attacking this fucking chef right now. There are snakes coming down these stairs right next to Raven. There's some you don't see every day. <laughs> okay. For expediency, I'm going to use these tokens to represent snakes. There's a snake. Is that a wolf with That is a parachin. It's a snake. I didn't... That is a wolf I didn't with want to... It's a snake. No, it's supposed <laughs> to be a... Oh, it is a wolf head. That's weird. <laughs> Well, that's not no, the way it's designed. It's an elk be... with a wolf head. Just kidding. It's clearly a snake. Don't worry. <laughs> that's clearly a snake. Yes, let's let's show that to everyone. That's clearly. Whoa. There you go. See, that's if that doesn't say snake, <laughs> I don't know what does. Uh, they're monsters. That's a they're sky monster snake. that I love the lore of, but they're fucking boring to fight, and they eat hearts. <laughs> Yummy. Who doesn't love the eat hearts? Not this guy is for sure. Uh, Raven, were you done with your turn? Or do you want to attack a snake? I want to. Uh, let's see. I did my lure. I want to attack a snake. Okay. I'm making more snake paratons. I'll attack snake number one. Yay! Okay. Mm, hang on. Uh, that's actually a 28 because I get a bonus for my uh, sure yeah I'm sure I believe you esoteric <laughs> lore target okay what hit and damage there's an extra Robert how do I add the extra damage to the damage with my pop up I don't know. You stopped playing them, so I purged my mind <laughs> okay. that. That's cool. I think we had macros. Did I have you add macros to your hot bar? Yeah. Anyway, I don't want to hold up the game. We'll worry about that later. Uh, that was... Well, that seems really low. 16 damage? That can't be right. Dude, it's a snake. It's fucking dead. He killed it. It's a snake. It's just dead. Oh, okay. <laughs> They, you're doing unarmed attack. Do you not have a weapon yeah. drawn? Oh, uh, and with my let's see, that was my second action. Third action, I'm gonna pull out my warhammer. I thought you were using your claws. I, well, I was, but the damage wasn't coming up right. Oh, okay. We'll have to fix it before next session because these are snakes. You hit them, they die. Okay. Oh, I love I'll that. Just keep, I, I'll just keep punching them. Then I'll hit another one. Okay. I was just, I was just trying to make it easier on things. Uh, second one, I thirty one. Another dead snake. Yep, I'm gonna start like racking up how many snakes are dead. There's two right there. And that's the end of my turn. <laughs> All right, and man, eighteen is too slow. Um, Morg, I don't recall. Did you make your will save? Yeah, you're not one of the people that were floating. Sure. Okay. All right, it's your turn. There's snakes, and there's people that are distracted by snakes. Do you want to kill people or snakes? Yeah. Oh, I was floating. Does that affect anything? No. Okay. No, something in a moment, as long as we get to that point, will matter. Okay. It'd probably put you off guard, I would think, but I don't think that mattered. Yeah, good point. All right. Mobility, moving, kill me some snakes. Claws, two attacks. So when it comes to attacking, is in the in a foundry. Do I just click like uh, first attack, second attack? Is that how that works? Uh, first thing you got to do is target the person you're attacking. So you can either double right click at that token, or hover your cursor over it and press T on the keyboard. You'll see a little. Change. Yeah, it's a fucking video game. Yeah, I, I kind of thought about it. Kind of like a video game. 
right. So do that. So yeah, you see you have them targeted now. Yeah, then on your actions tab, uh, you can click. Uh, should have options there. Uh, do you, are you using a weapon or are you using unarmed? What, what's your? His weapon is his hands. Then you should have options to click for. Uh, yeah, first attack. I'm gonna look with you, Mark. It'd be strike plus your bonus. Then to the right of that says map. And then to the right, that's another map. Uh, so, Morg, the second icon from the left in the action bar is actions. And then on the actions page, you'll see a bunch of little tick boxes. And then attacks, claw, jaws, unarmed strike, acid flask. You see those? There it is. Oh, it fucked it so much. No. That was my attack. What? I'm trying to find so under actions is a lot. Right. Yeah. But nothing that says attack. It'd be strike. Well, it, it, there's also a big label that says attacks. There'd be under attacks are claw, jaws, unarmed strike. Are you under looking at actions? <laughs> yeah. Yes, I know. So you're you're in your character sheet. You're on the actions tab of your character sheet, right? Oh yeah, I'm I'm there too. Yep. All right. So then you see you go down. You see attacks, and you see your listed attacks yep. there. Um, uh, hit strike plus your bonus. For you, it'd be claw. So hit. this critical hit. All right. So, so that's done. Then the next one, you you have to apply the map, so you'll hit the next button over. Well, if the first one kills it, I'll go for next. Yeah, yep. Does he need to roll damage? No. I mean, you can roll damage just to see how much damage you do to a fucking snake. I'm kind of curious. Sure. Lamp. This is actually kind of, this is pretty dope. The whole dice rolling thing, I just got to learn how all this works with Interaction. So it dies, right? Mm -hmm. Alright. Yes, it's dead. What? I'm used to having Morg in chat to talk to while you guys are doing this. I know, it's weird. There's nobody in chat. chat. <laughs> I'm, not, uh, I'm not in there. <laughs> um, aren't you also a rogue? Oh, these things are not off guard. You would have yeah, to. Yeah, I need to get them off guard for get sneak attack. Okay. Oh, I'm not worried about sneak attack. You said it. They're snakes. I'm not worried about. I know. I'm just looking them. at your damage. And it's <laughs> <laughs> oh, sure. It's either flanking or off guard. So. Okay. So move, kill. So target the next one. Move. Oh, okay, if you're not going to attack them, never mind. Can I? I mean, just suppose like that. The kitty corner. Can I attack that thing? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, any of the eight squares next to you counts as next to you. Oh, dope. All right, so this tracks. Hey, ignore the mist. They're snakes. That's not their AC. They, you hit. Womp. They're this easy to kill. That either means there's a shitload of them or they hurt when they hit you. Oh, sure. Or both. But... He slashes that one. The second one, I want him to grab up and just shove it in his mouth. <laughs> Pull the mask off and just consume the shit out of it. Oh, that's gross. All right, cool. Yeah, so much fun. It's not gross. It's fulfilling. <laughs> Ew. Oh, fuck. Chad. <laughs> you know what? This is... I don't want to have to roll things. Yeah, just Chad's asleep in the he, he could hide in the no. bathroom right next to him. <laughs> He's not a coward. But, you have not played. But he's not a coward. a coward. That's true. He could be asleep in the bunk. Why would he go to sleep early? No, Jet okay. lag from time travel. So I'll just do something. Nah, it'll, I'll just do something. I'll just change jet lag from time. I'll just change the timing of which something else happens. So um, that warping of the front window now comes to fruition, and the entire window just falls off. 
and a vacuum is created, and everyone that's floating has to roll a reflex save, or you get blown into the air. Even inside? Inside the... There's... There, it's open to the air now. You're basically yeah. outside. Oh, shit. The window just blew out. Oh, shit. Uh, reflex save? Yeah. And... Cases are outside. Like one right? for so, Nia, but... Yeah, also... Oh. Only the people that failed their last yeah. one that, who are floating have to make yep. it. Right. Uh, um, what did you say, Morgan? Case is on the outside of the boat, so to speak, so he's not subject to that vacuum. Am I wrong? Well, yeah, but you're also not floating. The floating was the issue. Right. I, I'm really good. Oh my god! Okay, so. Look at everyone else. <laughs> uh, well, Raven gets sucked out. We're, we're going down! Good thing he can fly. No, we're good. Yeah. Ni- Niall gets sucked out, too. I'm fine. Bye. I can, he's fine. He's. Holy hell, they get sucked out of the boat? Jesus he pulls Christ. away into a puff of smoke and goes back to, <laughs> to Nimoy's mind. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, no, actually, you did you roll a save for him, the uh, will save? Uh, the will save, he failed the, the first, like, the flying one. Oh, he did fail that one? Okay. So then, yeah, he flies out. Okay. Um, and I said Edmund was floating, but he rolled a 19, so he saves. And Chad also goes blowing out the front window. I kind of want it in them like fail this one. Bye, Chad. <laughs> Bye, Chad. Nice knowing you. <laughs> he can fly, too. <laughs> yeah, I know. Can he? Oh. About that. It'd be funny if he couldn't. He's probably safer out there. <laughs> I'm like, uh, Nick's getting swallowed. Yeah. Saved his life. Something bad happens. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that is... You are... Okay, so Raven is now 40 feet away from the dirigible. It dragged you out. It, it moved you 100 feet. Oof. Okay. So you're out there and, like, down a bit. And Chad is out, and that's it. Those are the only people out. Okay, so then, yay, I can just... Hand wave Chad's turn because no one can see him. Mm-hmm. Sir Lynn. All right. First action, draw my weapon. Uh, draw. There's, there's. Uh, second and third actions, I will take out and drink a potion. Uh, I will drink an antidote. Because I think I know where this is going. An antidote protects you from toxins. Upon drinking an antidote, you gain a plus three item bonus to fortitude saving throws against potion poisons for six hours. Okay. Right. Oh, I should mention that, like, while you're taking that, you hear a scream from someone below deck. Like, maybe they have snakes there, too. <laughs> Sucks for them. <laughs> All right. So that that's my full turn to draw a weapon, dig around for my antitoxin, and drink it. Okay. Or anti uh, antidote. Okay. And Nimue? Nimue's just floating above the sofa, just oh, damn it. So uh, uh, she kind of just points at one of the snakes, and or not at one of the snakes. Is there like a anything loose around that hasn't flown away? Like I don't know, like a plate or an ashtray or something. Yes, both. Cool. Uh, Nimoy just points at an ashtray and a little black laser uh, uh, shoots at the tray and he just flings it at one of the snakes casting <laughs> like a magnetic projectile. Okay, it's cool. That's my I'm be- ashtray in the face. <laughs> I'm betting as long as you don't fumble, you hit it. <laughs> uh, Please tell me it hits. It's fucking hilarious. Uh, uh, tack. Oh, 22. Okay, so you kill Snake. It's dead. Five down, only 20 more. Or 40, who knows? (laughs) Or 100. Uh, uh, At this point, Snakes are basically pouring down the stairs. uh, Yeah. 
first and last action just cast shield and finish my turn. Okay, and then at the end of your turn, or rather after your turn, Raven falls bodily into a manticore! Oh. What? <laughs> <clears throat> wow, how lucky there's just a manticore right to there. To save me. <laughs> Man, this guy's ready to his airship. <laughs> Holy fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so let's see how much the manticore can do, because that's funny. No, he's not friendly. No, no. He would like to eat the airship. Roll animal taming. <laughs> okay, this is weird, but like, roll a reflex save. It has a breath weapon. It's electricity. Huh. Me? Roll a reflex? Yeah. Yeah, you. Yeah, you. <laughs> How about a 22? Oh, that's not going to do it. Our Manticore is also part of, part of Snake Storms. <laughs> uh, um, the, uh, the, the, uh, fuck. Fira Winslow, the captain, dwarf, tiefling, she goes, uh uh-uh. uh, <laughs> looking scared. Snake storm with a chance of manticore. <laughs> All right, oh my god. Because you've run into it, it also gets to attack of opportunity. All right. So you actually made the save. Oh, good. So you take half of that. 22. You take a left. Oh. Do you want to use your yeah, reaction? I'd like to thingy? use my reaction that gets rid of exactly 11. Okay. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it hits me. And I'm like, what else you got? I could do this all day. Uh, I am going to show this image so that you have a really clear image. It's not just a manticore. It's a shimmer manticore. Mm-hmm. So it's going to bite you with a goat head and a lion Whoa. head. Miss. Miss with the same number. It's like a super chimera or something. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, got a fabulous hairdo on that lion, too. Yeah, I saw that. That's pretty cool. That's some good product. That's cat and another. Yeah. <laughs> the other two heads are probably as pissed off at him every morning as he spends thirty minutes just getting his hair perfect. <laughs> he, he shops where Chad shops. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh God. Okay. The captain goes. Uh. And she. She rolls. Driving. <laughs> and she tilts the dirigible. Bunch of snakes slide off of the top of the dirigible. <laughs> as it just, like, lists slightly, and you hear a, a lot of <laughs> as they fall off of the roof. And that's all she's doing, because n- no. She's holding on to the wheel in front of a big open window. Yeah. Oh, oh, sorry, she does go Manticore! <laughs> For anybody who didn't notice. Ooh. Raven's like, yeah, I'm aware. That means the left side of the boat. There's port and manticore. <laughs> <laughs> That's it's not stop that word. It's it's manticore. Ah, <laughs> oh, fuck me. All right. Holy fuck. All right, let's do it. Can't fly. Oh my god. This is really not good for Raven or Chad. Edmund can't fly. He's weightless. He knows this is bad. He creates a wall of living flesh where the window used to be. Nice. <laughs> Yummy. Pretty cool. Get a little hungry. I've got a real <laughs> gas that smells good, too. <laughs> Me. I'm a little bit down that wall. The wind immediately stops. Oh, and there's a bunch of mouths in the wall. Pleasant. Can we fly through one of those? Just like... <laughs> fly through a mouth? If it's a um, wall. Okay. With a mouth. I get it. Like, I guess so. Like, you could get through that side of it, but then you're taking bite oh, damage. I don't want to do that. Okay. 
Okay, he's gonna go give it fire breathing. Fire breathing wall. Yep. He'll have to do that next turn. He floats over to it. Raven, would you like to fight the Shimmeric Manticore? Yes. <laughs> Why not? Um, actually, I have to stop here for a moment. Robert, are you falling asleep? Not yet. I'm getting close. Okay. Um, I'm good to go for a bit. Well, because you're not quite asleep, should we pause here and leave the fight as is? It's up to you. I'm good to go for another 40 minutes or so if we need to. Okay. I guess I should. Let's ask, go. I guess I should ask everybody else too, because we got a late start. So, um, uh, okay, John, I know you're probably fine because you're not working. Yeah. <laughs> um, Red Devil, you cool? I'm cool, and technically, I'm. Um, it's still late. It's for me. The time ahead of everyone else, but I'm still not, I'm not sleeping. What time is it for you? It is ten eighteen. You're up at like one and two, so. I mean, maybe not every day, sure, but... And, Morg, you're okay, you're okay for now? I literally have no life and have all the time on my hands. Okay. So then we'll stop at 8 my time, so it's in 40-some-odd minutes for the rest of you guys. Okay. Raven. Um, you see that you can no longer get back in the airship. That's okay. You can solo a manticore. <laughs> Go for it. Oh. Fall to sleep. Forgot I was up. Uh, I want to do my esoteric lore on a manticore. Manticore, manticore lore. lore. Man. Wow. 35 word? <laughs> Fuck yeah. What are your weaknesses? Will saves. Ah. <laughs> That's it. Um, okay, mm -hmm. so this thing has an attack of opportunity. I don't know why I still call that. I should be right. Strike, whatever. It has a lightning breath. It can shoot spikes from its tail, and all three heads can strike at once. Wow. Oh my god. It gets three reactions every turn to bite. Oh no. Holy hell, really? Wow, that's not even fair. How does that work? You can handle it. That's bananas. Good luck with right. that. Oh, it's also daylight, so you can't yeah. heal. Uh, my section se second oh, action, oh. I am going to... Wait, so it's like next to me. We're both flying, right? Okay. Yeah. It's flapping furiously, and you're just kind of there. I want to grab it. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. That's just a funny image. Let's see. We'll do a little athletics check. 37. Nice. That is its DC. No, that's a critical success. Yeah. Oh, that means it is not only restrained, it is <laughs> immobilized. Right. Which means it starts oh dropping God. out of the air, right? And you can choose to drop with it or let go. Oh, can I drop with it until we're not quite to the ground yet and then let go? <laughs> sure. <laughs> oh, my <God>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Now, there's a mental picture. <laughs> that's actually that's actually really cool. I'm picturing him biting it on the way down. Well, I was too. I was gonna do a fang attack until I realized, oh, he's immobilized. But I can do a fang attack with my third act or second action on the way down, right? Yeah, you, second, you can do it. Go ahead. <laughs> that is fucked up. You're like one wing, two wings, fold. Oh, that's that was a, almost a natural. 20. That's a twenty-eight uh, with my plus two. That's pretty good. <laughs> Okay, that's not a critical hit, but it's a mobilized till not a critical hit, but it's a hit. So roll your fang damage. Uh... Oh, and I get my plus on this, too, because damage is damage. Uh, that is 20 damage. <laughs> Dude, you are fucked up! <laughs> okay! So you're plummeting with this thing like a rock, and you just go... Arr! 
and the 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 goat goes <laughs> <laughs> and you let it go right before it hits the ground how much fucking damage does that do does it have trained in, or expert in acrobatics i think that's what a d6 for every 10 feet uh no it's number of feet oh and you're up, you were 100 feet up you fell 40 feet so it's 60 feet so it's 60 damage i wow Okay, so it makes it a crater. <laughs> I lost half a hit points. That was badass. If I had... dude, that was messed up. <laughs> You're like fuck it, back uh, here. They can't handle me. <laughs> it's bludgeoning equal to half the distance. You know. Oh, okay. Thank you. I thought it sounded quite not quite right. So it takes thirty. Rules layered. That's good. That's a very good superpower. We were only a hundred feet up. There shouldn't have been any change in pressurization. So, so he, okay, he you're put 5, the to the ground. It's dead. <laughs> Fine, it's dead! <laughs> well, I was going to say, like, you just dropped the Chimera from the fucking airship. It's probably not going to be happy. I don't have any <laughs> idea what the air pressure change would be. I'm, I'm, just, right. I'm just saying. Just be... No, no, no. Say. Okay, so then it hits the ground, and you let go, and it's dead, and you're just floating above it. Like, its heads get broken off. Like, all three spines break. Just one shot at Super Chimera. <laughs> <laughs> and nobody saw it. Except for <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Nobody's gonna believe I Chad. killed a Kraken once in another game, and none of the other characters saw it. And I was like, dang it. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's your luck carried forward, yeah. then. That's They're like, yeah, sure, you <laughs> killed it. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was a running thing in another campaign of mine. There was one character like every time he did something amazing, nobody was there to see it. It happened just consistently throughout the campaign. With my third action, I'll start flying up because that's going to take a while. <laughs> yeah, and I think that Talon isn't fast enough to catch up. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, he would slowly. He is ten feet okay. faster. Good. How fast is this ship? 30. 30 around? It's a speed and of 30. And I fly at 40. So speed of 30, so 9, 30. 90 around? Yeah. Yeah. I love how slow this thing is, and this is the fastest way to get where you're going. Yeah. yeah. It still takes, like, 5 to 9 days, depending. I think it's going to be 4, but I didn't want to give the math away yet, because I'm not sure. If it's flying around the clock, it'd be three days, actually. Much like your carriage. So that, that's that's good. Okay, so it'll be three days as long as nothing happens to the airship, which clearly nothing is happening to We're the airship. We're perfectly safe up here. Yeah. <laughs> wow, I can remove the manticore. That was fast. <laughs> Fucking thaumaturgs, man. <laughs> yep. I think that was vampireness. Yeah. Vampire and familiarness. Yeah, and everyone's just like, oh, do oh, I, I get any? Away. Oh, never mind. Going to see if I got any hit points back for that, but I didn't lose any hit points, so I... never mind. <laughs> no. More? All right, so what I'd like to do is have him just drop his mask and fucking hiss at these snakes and you kind of, pop, I don't know how you're going to play this out, like kind of holds initiative and like wait for him to come at him and just. Go at them as they approach them. Go at them like attacking them? Well, go at them. I'm assuming they're going to come at him. And he'll just kind of react and just fucking grab, bite, wreck shit. Okay. I'm, kind of, I'm, I'm kind of interested in how you play Holy Initiative. Where he'll stand there and wait for them to, to come at him. And then he'll just basically react to that. Actually, I, I just forgot that I was having them go right before you, so I guess they're on their way to you Fine. now. Move them in. I need to move this little marker. He fucking drops a mask and just kind of goes like feral and just like... There. Yeah. He's going to eat so many snakes. Um. Okay, so a ball python and a boa constrictor are running at you, I guess. Running? running snakes don't run. <laughs> yeah, they slither. Well, they, they can slither on. They can relax just so they can run at you. 
Slithering. The slithering <laughs> part two. They're slithering at me. <laughs> it's a slithering all over again. Oh, God. All right, so let's say that this... That's the wrong fucking computer. God, I hate that. One, two... Okay, so that is one snake. Like, all four <laughs> of those in front of you, that's just one big fucking snake. It's a boa constrictor. Oh, jeez. I would strip my heart out. <laughs> um, so, roll to hit if you haven't. What's that? Roll to hit if you haven't. Oh, what is that? That's a hit. Wait, six? I mean, what's your AC? Basically, a Bosch won't hit these fucking things. They're snakes. I don't know. Hold on. What's AC? Oh, you hit. Well, for the um, cons- for the boa constrictor, it's the same AC as the paraton. So just go off of what you have there. So you hit. Roll damage. Well, oh, and uh, still alive. So, quick question. So, these roll the these edges that are happening. Where is that located? Because I roll a dice, but I don't see where they're added up. Is that a thing? Are um, you on the chat chat window? Chat window. So your top make, right, uh, all the way across on the boards. Make sure you're on the chat window there. Ah, okay. I gotcha. All right. Thank you. Uh, it's Wait. down to half his hit points in one hit. It's your turn again. You gonna hit him again? Hell yeah. Two claws. Twenty-four. Yeah, hit. hits. Regular hit. Yeah, full damage. You don't have any sort of reaction, do you? I'm um, not in most combat. No, not you. I'm talking to the snake. Oh. <laughs> oh, well, the snake doesn't matter because they're going to fucking die. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck, you're right. Okay. Jesus Christ. All right, well, I guess you ripped its head off. Does it die? Yeah. Oh, I think. I... So his skull, is, his uh, wrappings in his hands have the de- decay option. Uh huh. So as it comes at him, I want him to like, wrap his hands around and then kind of warp the snake's flesh and consume its head. And kind of decay part of his body down as it just gets destroyed. You're a broken, broken man, aren't you? <laughs> I'm playing the caterer. It's not <laughs> sure. It's right. Like, right, like you don't really want to eat a rotting snake. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't want to eat a rotting snake? Right. It's not true. Said, so that's good. Jesus. Next. <laughs> there is blood. Snakes don't have a lot of blood. It it comes out as mostly like gore, like blood and guts. So there's well, something he, on you. He's, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. I've seen snake blood and snake blood it. like, all, so dark it's, like, almost black. Well, for him, it was kind of funny. He has an ability that lets him see blood abnormally. Which, Jake, you gave me. And it's kind of dope. It is called, if I remember right, I uh, the eye tattoo. Yeah. So blood to him looks, like, lit up. So if you were to see blood on a blood red carpet, so to speak, it would still stick out in a, like kind of a bright red, no matter what color it was. Oh, you'll be a really good investigator. Yeah, I'm Batman. <laughs> that is about how creepy Batman is, if you think about him. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, Chad's turn. You guys hear <laughs> electricity is being thrown at snakes. Uh, Sir Lynn. All right. Um, <clears throat> oh, wait, I'm sorry, Moore. You had another action. Did you want to move up to another snake? There's still, like, six on that deck. Oh, yeah, sorry. Um, boop. Okay. Go ahead, Sir Lynn. Just 
check in one thing. Don't remember if I had this feed or not. Yes. So I will run up to first snaky boy here. That's one action. Two action. Uh, I will try to intimidate him. Or no, I already did. I try, what? Is this the one what? I intimidated at the start of initiative? Be like, fuck off, snake. I don't know. Yes, yes, it was. Yeah, I, I, it doesn't matter. But the the thing that matters is that I have panache from okay. from the the successful intimidation at the beginning. Do you have the glare feet? Yes, I do. I've okay. That's what I was checking. I have intimidating glare. Okay, good. Um, all right. So one action to get there. Sorry, I need to drag Panache on. Where is this? Is oh, how I... I just handle fighting animals. Damn it! I forgot Shadow Sting was here. All right, attack. Why did I close my character sheet? All right, thirty to hit. That that's a critical hit. I know it doesn't look like it, but it's a critical All hit. Right. I want to see. I want to see the damage. Fuck you, snake! Whoa. <laughs> so, is that the critical number, or is that the number before you double it? That's okay. a crit. Fifty damage. Freaking damage. See, there's, see, there's a two times at the front. Of is it. that am I am I seeing that right? Fifty fucking damage. Plus That's some a... persistence if he survives the damage. It's on fire, right. it's bleeding. I, I right, do that so... with a fifth level spell. In it. Did you just hit? And... Do, you, do you know the Do you know the phrase overkill? Yeah, I can't even do that much damage. So anybody looking down the hallway just sees Sir Lynn run into a booth and just, just a spray of blood and flame. <laughs> there is no longer any sign of a snake. Just blood. Yeah. You <laughs> made it into a wallet. <laughs> oh my God. All right. It's like you already started skinning it. <laughs> yep. Third action. All right. Well, that we'll one's dead. Run down to there. You guys are so mean. Jesus. <laughs> oh, I meant to say this earlier. Right before Raven got out, he saw one of the only three crew the guy who's supposed to work on the engines, run down toward the engine room instead of, like, staying to help with snakes. Hmm. Right, that's the end of my turn. Wow. Nimue. Nimue is Nimue. going to go down to the engine room. <laughs> All right. And see, like, downstairs, because oh. her sound's there as well. So, yes, yeah. make a split map this. Wherever that is, she's going to go there. Uh, do you have survival? Like, are you good at tracking? I will tell you in a second. Uh, I am trained in survival. Fuck it, roll it. Nice. 24. Okay. Um, you see signs of the little gnome engineer's passage. He went uh, down to the room below, sure, but also um, into the engine room. Why is there someone here? No one should come here. I need an electrified front door. <laughs> Is an assassin. Yeah, they usually knock. <laughs> yeah, they do. They do. They're polite. Play assassins. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, so you you see the uh, the uh, the engineer, the the gnome dude. Hold on, Lucky. His name is Lucky Lanks. And he's got goggles on and a cheesy grin. Okay, hold on. Oh, may as well. He looks like he's a point dexter. Uh, so, 
Now you get to roll crafting because you see him fucking with the engine. Give me that. <laughs> <laughs> Is this what I live for? <laughs> that gnome looks like he on the weekends he's an Elvis impersonator. He <laughs> <laughs> on, on a yeah, mid roll. On the crafting roll? Yeah. Okay, yeah, he was trying to um flush the coolant from the system, thus making it grind to a halt. Okay. Because this does still run on an engine. Can I help with that? Wait. You're actually trying to disable the vehicle as well? I'm trying to he's help. He's trying to sabotage. Wait, oh, he's sabotaging yeah, he's it? Yeah, oh, yeah, I yeah. think you should help him. You should absolutely help him. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah. snakes wasn't he enough. <laughs> yeah, no, oh, okay. Uh... Yeah, no, uh, uh, I want to do something about that. <laughs> what do I? Give him the balls! <laughs> I cast. <laughs> what can I cast? Uh, suggestion. And I say. Do you have anything to mobilize? Huh? Sorry, go ahead. Uh, and I just say. Hey, 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 what are you doing? Why don't we stop and talk for a minute? Oh, uh, yeah, the, uh, the, the engine do- Hey, can you help me over here? I need to flush the system. Uh, I cast suggestion, then tell him to stop and talk. And he needs to make oh, a no. will save, uh, of 28. That's a critical failure. Yep. Uh, critical failure. Uh, he's gonna stop and talk to me for one hour. <laughs> <laughs> his whole lore backstory talks about his family. Wait yeah. until I tell you about my day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're just gonna I'm sit there and talk. Eat. That's it. Okay, so what what is the suggestion that you give? Like, what do you start saying so I know what kind of information to give, if any? Uh, so what is it that you're here for? I maintain the engine. Yeah? And what was that uh, you were doing there? Uh, just curious. I was flushing the system. How does this work with lying? Like, you can still lie, but you're you're able to... Check on it. Yeah, roll. I, I probably just make a uh, perception, perception to the tech or sense motor. Yeah, roll perception. Oh, hero point there because I have three because I've been stuck in. <laughs> what spell did you cast? Uh, suggestion. What? Why am I not finding suggestion? Fourth. What level is it? Fourth. What the hell? Yeah, there it is. Okay. Thank you. It also, okay. You suggest a course of action to the target. So what are you suggesting that he do? Just stop and talk or just talk. Okay, then yeah, he's free to lie. Yeah. It's just that you can... He can't walk away because he's talking to you. Yeah. The base duration is an hour. <laughs> oh my god! We're just having a conversation. Yeah, he's clearly lying, but oh yeah. Either way, she's just gonna wait for everyone to just get get everything handled, and then we can handle this guy. Um, all right, so he's he's happy to chat with you about like the engine parts, and uh, stop and talk. My God, really? <laughs> okay. So uh, he says, "You're not with the gu gilded gunners, are you? The gilded gunners are just you know not great people, but they pay well." Yeah, no. Are you with the gilded gunners? No. <laughs> You can roll this. You can roll the perception if you want. Yeah, I will. Let's see how good he is at lying. Mm, not great, twenty-two. You 
got a 30. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so it, it, whether you believe if he's lying or not, it's not, like, perfectly clear. Either way, it's, it's a, yeah. it's I mean, I don't know who he's with, but I know he's trying to sabotage the shit. Yeah. So, yeah. He's definitely up to no good. Yeah. Okay, so he just, like, sits there and chats with you then about, like, life and how much he doesn't like living in Alkenstar and how he'd really like to move to a different country, but he just can't. He doesn't have enough money. Yeah, and Nemo's like, uh, yeah, I know, right? Who would want to live there in a place without magic? <laughs> What's up with that? Oh, my God. Half, okay, so that's, a, <laughs> half that's at least the rest of your turn. What? Half relating, half kind of seeing what his uh, motives are. It's like... Oh, he'll, he'll happily tell you his motives. And he tells you that he hates being on this damn airship. Really? I kind of like flying. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, we're, we're just chatting. That's our turn. Oh. <coughs> I really want to invent. I love glass blowing. Don't you love glass blowing? I tried it once. It wasn't for me, really. But honestly, it's useful for making models and vials. <laughs> The captain gets attacked by one of the mouths on the wall. That's interrupted. <laughs> it misses her and she steps way the fuck back. Nice uh, cut there. <laughs> Just having a nice <laughs> conversation with the enemy and then launch. Uh, and she can't get to the wheel right now, so she just pulls out a rapier, I guess, and starts trying to stab snakes. Which they still seem rather limitless. And then Edmund? Oh, that's right, he's floating right next to the wall. Oh, that's right, he was going to feed the wall things, but there's no snakes around and there's not necessarily any point. Fuck. Are you guys here in the crickets, or should I... I don't care, it's fine. I wonder where our friends went! One of them just power bombed it. Fucking Samara. Alright, yeah, Edmund is just starting to babble about how good it feels to be light on my feet! And, uh, I guess he could. Sh nope. He would go above deck. To look for more snakes to kill, because this area has been cleared out. And um, Raven, you're trying to catch up, I yep. imagine. Okay. Which I'll only get and... thirty feet closer per turn. If it's going thirty and I'm going forty, so it's going to take me a while. Yeah, but you eventually will. Uh, I would like to just call the fight at this point, because it's just wimpy ass snakes. That are supposed to just be an environmental effect anyway, basically. And and the mana core's dead. I, I didn't expect that. I, it wasn't even a full round that it took. It was two actions. <laughs> yeah, the manticore went down instantly, and uh, the enemy sabotaging just carried the trail. <laughs> You're mine for an hour. <laughs> you guys resolve issues too fast. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, the, the suggestion um, okay, I so just cast on a whim. I didn't even know what to say, and I. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it it's the great. same with the, the shrink potion. I didn't plan to use it for this, but it works. Yeah. It's nice yeah. to have magic again. All right, so eventually Chad would just come back in through the upper floor because you can access this from the, the something deck. Observe, He's avoiding deck. the meat wall. He's avoiding the creepy-ass meat wall with teeth, yes. And I guess Shadow Sting and Edmund would just be going around killing shit. Like, things are dead. And the storm of snakes does eventually pass. Uh, the observation deck would get, like, uh, a, a, a barred door across it. So the snakes stay up there. But then eventually she would just, like, tilt the ship and they would fall off again. <laughs> just shake them loose. Right. So eventually you guys run out of snakes to fight. Because you can seal the ship up, and the window was sort of repaired. That doesn't last forever, though, but it does last long enough for the weightlessness to end. So then, I guess, like, 
uh, there's an all stop called because you're missing a passenger or two. <laughs> and uh, work overboard. Does anyone have like supernatural <clears throat> sense of smell? Uh, I don't think so. Well, yeah. uh, I don't know if does. I, th- I, I, I think kids it can with a yeah. potion, but I no. think Nyas beats for him does, but we haven't used that yet. I can't remember if vampires have a sense of smell or not. I don't think so in this case. Oh, if you were more drained. That's would. right. Oh, that makes sense. And I just fed on Manticore, so I'm good. <laughs> that was I that was a to go meal. <laughs> Yeah, just drop right in. Fast food. Oh my god, it's awful. Perfect, but awful. All right, so like no other passengers got killed. Um, (laughs) this was a pretty pretty eventful initiative. I'm definitely gonna write Yelp about this airline. Way too many snakes. So, okay, so Fira, Fira, the captain, she says, What do you think we should be doing about the the front window? It's just... Can anyone help repair the ship? Is she yelling that? (laughs) Because the name is downstairs. And she can do that. Yeah, she's yelling it pretty loud. I can do it, but I'm talking with Chase the enemy just right like... now. She yells. <laughs> uh, what'd you say, Mark? Uh, Case is just like tearing snakes up in the back row there, just like ripping them apart. And uh, feasting. Like a Quite beast. Quick. Yep, just making a mess and kind of oblivious to what's happening outside of that. Making a very mess. specific snitch way. Disgusting. <laughs> It's delicious. Better than than you. <laughs> yeah, okay. I guess Edmund would say, Tell you what, you're stuck out there on the prairie for six weeks. They look delicious. Alright, so we're going to stop. Here and I, I expected the ship to crash. <laughs> See, I knew I was, I was worried about that. I was kind of aiming like he might want to crash and fucking. <laughs> I mean, it's not, it's not too late for that. We can crash the next session. Yeah, oh, we'll find a way to crash the ship. Don't worry. He's still doing it. It's fine. <sighs> I did not expect Nimue to just like follow the dude that's like sneaking off. All right, well, fine. I guess you don't get to the next place I want you to go yet. Damn oh, yeah. I, yeah, I thought that was a good guy. I was, I was going down to help. Yeah, I, I really wish you had just helped. <laughs> helped just crash this shit. That would have been awesome. <laughs> He's like, pull here. Here? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> like, you, you're so excited to be able to, like, it, apply your crafting skill that you just don't ask Honestly, questions. Honestly, yeah. Do it. <laughs> That was awesome. That yeah, was that's, really that's Jake, awesome. you need to work on your poker face and let that happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, he rolled crafting. He, yeah. he would have known. Yeah, that, that's that's true. Especially with his huge bonus. God. That wasn't him. Even... Did you put, like, all of your extra bonuses in that? What was that? Did you, like, put a bunch of your, like, all of your extra optional bonuses no, into uh, that? I don't know. The The optional bonuses are automatically off until I actually turn them into the That's right. How did you get 25? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It just happens that way. Uh, it what it is. Plus 5 and from intelligence, plus 15 from master, plus 1 from item bonus. Nice. Okay, yeah, My master proficiency. Give me a plus 1. Yeah. Okay, I would say like every plus one counts, but in this case, no. Like every plus five <laughs> counted. Yeah, and also I right, forgot. I should. I honestly shouldn't roll to make potions because 
like I said, I wanted to see if I got a critical, but all my successes count as critical for making potions. So I, I automatically just craft a half price. Nice. That's yeah. neat. Uh, so, all right, we're going to stop here, and next time we're going to resume with the airship with, like, a lot fewer corpses here. Actually, I'm going to keep it there so we remember what happened. Um, so, that was your first mana storm. Weird magic hey. shit happened. God, really? I'm disappointed that the mana core didn't do anything. It didn't get to kill anybody. Yeah, fucking right is where he did. You know what? There can be more mana cores. There's always another mana core out there. Guys always kill his toys! <laughs> Do rocks exist in the Finder, like the big birds? I don't know, but they would in my games because it's part of history. They do now. Yeah, there's a rock. It's level nine. It's our level. Nice. I love that this thing had so many attacks. I did not. I. Dude, it's your critical hit. It was the immobilization. Fuck. Fuck. I like that. that Fuck. The, Bad things instant, happen when you yeah. immobilize we, a flying we both, creature. Yeah, Sorry. We, we both instantly beat yep. the boss with either a critical success or a critical fail on the save. Yeah, you, you guys reading the ma- module? You guys <laughs> know what's going on ahead of time. You, there are two off switches in that fight. You both hit them. <laughs> I was yeah. going down to help. I didn't no, even no, know that was so bad yet. <laughs> I do want to find out if there is anything that you guys can actually do to replace the window. Uh, Nemoy has a lot of crafting tools. Or re- repair tools. Yeah, they have materials. Uh, we're talking like glass? Because... I don't know. Yeah. Something see-through. Yeah, Nemoy has five repair toolkits. Well, yeah, but can you make glass? Or... Um... A wall of wood or something. I'm not sure how that would work. Yeah, I think it's going to have to get boarded up, but they're going to have to find uh, another way to pilot. Let's see if I have a spell that would help. So maybe you could rig up a mechanism that they can pilot from the observation deck or something. Or maybe a walkie-talkies, if there's any <laughs> does that. A couple of cups on a string. <laughs> or just, just, we'll just run back and forth to relaying orders. I think Jake <laughs> secretly wants the ship to crash and then we just go on out from there. <laughs> well, it's not secret. It's not. <laughs> oh, well, oh, I have Mending as a first rank spell. Take out the slower yeah. okay. Um You can cast that uh, leveled up to repair magical things, so I wouldn't see why you couldn't repair this, but it's not just a repairment, it's a, re- it's a replacement. I see. Yeah. Yeah, uh, okay, okay. It's sort of be like creating armor by casting Mending. Yeah. Mm. I don't know, we'll look into it. We'll figure it out. Um, okay, so let's end oh. here on the stream, and then we can talk about stuff. I was going to say, Chad can manipulate elements. I was trying to think if there's a way an element manipulation can help fix that. I feel like he can do metal fire. and fire and air. No, I'm sorry. Would, I think metal and air. Metal and air. air. No. Red Devil, I would you like say? glass would be more earth than metal. Though. Yeah. It's sand. I think yeah, Chad needs to he, go out the window and be done with <laughs> He can conjure a raw ore to put... Does anybody have the forge spell? I don't know if I can hit that. What level is it? It's a fire spell. I don't remember. First, I think. What's it? It, it doesn't matter. Wait, let's talk about this off oh, camera, yeah. off screen. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Um, I will try to crash this thing next time. And... Criticals ruin my day. Try <laughs> harder. <laughs> Criticals ruin your day. <laughs> Thaumaturge is back, <laughs> baby. Yes. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. That was the a good Motorcycle reaction. riding that's vampire that's orc just powerbombed a manicure from the top <laughs> yep. of a dirigible. Like, How can you not love this game? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Fucking one hit that shit. That's a good point. All right. Absolutely. Thanks. Bye. Yeah.